So, everybody, hello, good evening, good afternoon, good morning. Uh, we are Pixel Slaves. Pixel today... Slaves! Pixel Slaves! <laughs> Today, and Robert doesn't know it yet, but he's a pixel slave too. Slave I'm to pretty pixel. sure <laughs> he's slave. And um, I mean, I'm super honored uh, and and happy to have Robert Scoble on our show. He is a legend. legend. And um, I mean, absolutely uh, honored and really happy to 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 be here and discuss all this stuff about AI, VR, XR. Uh, metaverse and everything, whatever we decide to discuss, we'll just blast it. There's music. no script. There's no music, music, music. I've maybe just spatial audio music collection. Okay. Oh, oh. Yeah, right. You do. You do oh. on 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 Apple Music, right? You, you, yeah. You're, you're collecting, oh, of course. But Shota oh. doesn't have Apple Music. You know, he's left over. Now. Well, he's like, you know, so, uh, someday uh, I own I own I own QuickTime. Uh, I own the iTunes store. <laughs> I can listen to it. Hey, you'll make enough money to be able to afford Apple products. <laughs> uh, all right. So, I mean, again, super happy to have you, Robert. Um, how are you doing? You've been on vacation right now, right? You just no, came I'm, back. I'm back home. I was just in Spain for a week. It was awesome. Yeah. So all right. Things are good. Things are good. You know, how's, how's, how's Spain doing? A... Spain is Spain, man. It was fun. You know, nice hot beaches, beers. Chill out. Oh, take me. Next there time we go, go, take us. We want to go. Tapas. Tapas. It's all Tapas about the food. It's all about the food and the romantic walks on the beach, you know? <laughs> all right. Okay. Okay. That's that's cool. I wish, or you wish, you, you would have had a, a spatial video recorder with you, like a Vision Pro, or um, do you have a new iPhone to record the spatial videos? Because they just push an update. Oh, Breaking no, news. I, yeah, yeah. No, you take I, a HoloLens instead. I have a I have an iPhone from last year that has a terabyte of RAM on it, and I just don't want to give it up yet. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I, I don't want to spend another two thousand dollars on an iPhone. I just year. bought this iPhone 15 Pro just because I knew that they will push an update for special video, and actually they just did. I'm on the beta for uh, for yeah. iOS, and they pushed yeah. a 17.2, and then the same day they or the next day they pushed 17.3. And with that, the, the, the video special recording is in. I, tr I tested it. I didn't see it yet in VR because I didn't want to convert. And I think you lose quite a bit of quality on conversion. Uh, but I've seen some other videos, people recorded it. And I think Apple will do some magic because the, the integration is super seamless, right? You, you just, in the video recording, you just have one icon, which is like Vision Pro and just click it and boom, it's just recording your special, special video. video. That's what uh, we want which... is Gaussian splats. So let's go. Let's let's just go to the future. Give us the future. You know, okay. Okay. AI guy. Wait a second. Wait a second. <laughs> it's too far. Oh, okay, it's too far. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Okay. Uh, tell us. Tell us, uh, Robert, because you are. You know, I, I want to say. Can you can you give us like your brief life in like a minute elevator pitch? Like I was what have, have you done? A minute. Uh, I was Apple's first child labor back in 1977, uh, 78, and learned how to solder on Apple II motherboards. And that really started my career out. Um, and, you know, I, I I met Steve Wozniak, the guy who built the motherboards in, in a community college and studied with him every, every morning in 1989. Amazing. And that led to a whole career of working at Microsoft as a strategist and Wow. Yeah, you know, I there's mean... a lot that that happened. I, uh, you know, I had a famous video and blog show blog uh, in in Silicon Valley. So I studied Silicon Valley innovation um, in a way that nobody else did for almost a decade. And th so things like uh, Siri was launched on my show. Um, Instagram, I was the 79th user. I had the first ride in the first Tesla oh with Elon Musk. Um, I had many, many, many first. Uh, uh, I launched Cloudera and Flipboard and all sorts of companies. Shoulda, so. shoulda, shoulda. Uh, you know, in the first episode, I feel, so, I feel this big right now. Yeah, by the way, exactly. In the, in the first episode, <laughs> wrote four we were, books we, on technology. We introduced, kind of yeah, we introduced yeah. ourselves in the first episode, and we said, like, you know, someone is pro we're we're professionals. We said. <laughs> Now I think both of us are plebs, and here's mm. the professional. Actually, We're okay. The plebs. Finally, we get a professional. Uh, show, right? Tell us At more. Least... You're... Tell, tell yeah. us more. <laughs> I, I don't know about this tinker, but... <laughs> <laughs> At I least I was showing all these up to expectations. And company <laughs> magazine, and Microsoft as a strategist. So you know, I think th th I had a great career, and now I'm just sort of having fun studying the world of AI. 
So no, you're doing great right doing now, it. actually. We're we, we're we're gonna get there. Uh, but maybe yeah. maybe we touched base. I think first time uh, somewhere 2021 ish, uh, something yeah. before that, right? Yeah. And you came to Somnium. Um, we did a tour together. I showed you around. Um, yeah. And and then it's looking uh, a lot and, better now, huh? I mean, and wait for the new update. I mean, no yeah. ads here, but no, no see, I, ads here. See, now you're gonna make me go buy a new Windows box with a 4090 card just to rent, you know. That's just my job. The... That's my job. You'll have That's to the do minimum it. spec yeah. required to run the new Somnium. Space. Not only that, <laughs> sir. You have to buy VR one to see it in a 3K per eye resolution in a crystal clear spheric lenses. Then you will truly understand what the what the power of see, I need is. a I need a job so I can have a gadget budget so I can buy all these gadgets. <laughs> There's so many new gadgets coming out. <laughs> Should, okay, 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 okay. We'll 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 make something happen. We'll invite you here. You'll try it out. We'll we'll do something. Come on. Uh, we'll, yeah, that's we'll how make, I take it away with you. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Yours now. It's been on your face. You can now own it. That's yours. I mean, so you you had an amazing career, and again, it's an honor to have you to have you in the show. And mm -hmm. I interviewed you in a in my Deep Down Divers uh, VR podcast a long time ago. I think in twenty twenty one or so. Um, we but... did that in VR. That yeah, we awesome. did that in VR. Exactly. No cheating here. Yeah. No cheating. Like pure, yeah. pure, uh, pure VR stuff. But now we're just uh... using simple old cameras. <laughs> <laughs> and and I remember, do you remember, do you remember talking about Vision Pro? We can, we can like, di let's dive into Vision Pro first, yeah. uh, into Apple XR stuff. And yeah. then we can go to AI because there's a lot to, you know, to uncover in AI. It's hard uh, to get hyped up because it's still, it's still out there, you know? It, it, uh, yeah, I but we, we get some beats and pieces. We, we get some beats and pieces of puzzle, Oh, I know what it I, does. It's just, yeah, exactly. Man, I just, I'm tired I just, of waiting for this thing, man. I've been oh, waiting man. for 13 years. We can't you know? wait to spend our three and a half grand, right? Uh, we're all, exactly. I got the money all saved up. It's in a bank account, all ready to be spent. You know but, exactly, you know. exactly. I mean, no, I just want. I just wanted to say. You remember, Robert, when we, when we were, uh, you know, when when Apple uh, was far away of uh, introducing any handset, we were on Twitter Spaces, if I if I recall, and we were like yeah. battling uh, back and forth, me and you, between you were you were saying. I remember because we did a bet. Uh, okay, it's very important oh. here. We need some Did dramatic music. Wait, 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 wait. We need some dramatic music here. Okay, we need some dramatic music because because we did a exactly we we did a bet. All right, so so Robert, because you know it was like two years, three years before Apple even released something. Just rumors everywhere. You know, it's canceled, not canceled. What it will be? AR, XR, VR. Nobody knew, uh, right? And and then and then Robert was saying it will be a VR headset. Okay, that's what. You heard from from uh, yeah you you heard it from from for technically exactly, and I said nobody like, will v call it a VR headset exactly as as like a VR doesn't make sense because seems like a spatial headset Apple, yeah. Apple 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 didn't uh, and I, I said like VR Apple doesn't know how to do VR like I mean they don't have apps for VR they don't have uh, you know you cannot run any games on VR Macs are not made for uh, for 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 the gaming for VR and we're like going back and forth and. And uh, and in the end of the day, I think uh, you know you were more more right definitely than me because uh, you know while it's technically a VR headset, but it's more of a pass through XR you know uh, thing where probably VR will be 15, 20 percent of the use case. Most of the time, you will be actually looking at the environment um, yeah. and and kind and of driving uh, kind a of... Tesla. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Look, I, I was not video. driving. I was not driving it. Okay. The tweet is going viral. No, the tweet is going viral <laughs> for nothing. Okay, people think I was driving. I sit down in the car. I just looked at the at the at the, at the menu, and, and then I moved. moved one meter forward and one meter backwards in the parking spot. Nobody was around, and that's it. And people like, oh my god, this guy's driving Tesla in the VR headset. Is and now it's going viral. Okay, <laughs> I'm yeah. innocent, innocent, innocent. So don't do it. Don't drive Tesla in 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 VR in no. any VR. No. Well, okay, you know so that's coming because it. it uh, for sure, it for still sure. makes for two sure. main mistakes to wear a VR headset while it's driving. Yeah, right? yeah. For but sure. Two, two or three years from now, no, it'll be. Done. I want to see and Mario Kart overlays when you're driving down the street. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be insomnium space. My, my car's driving around. And I'll be, you know, exactly. Because people don't get it. Like self driving is coming. Like it's coming. I'm, I'm driving my Tesla for eight and a half years. So I was not driving it. Okay, already the same car, and I have autopilot version one. Which actually is oh. very good. They updated to a maximum limit what they could do, and yeah. I'd probably drive like ninety percent of all See, my I have, driving I have on the, the version highway. Three. My yeah, car's five yeah, years yeah, old. Okay, okay, those Americans. <laughs> it's always ahead. What's going Mine's on got here? Mine's got a gear stick. 
and the, but the, around here, there's, Robert, 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 Tesla, Robert, Robert, there's okay, 12 can, Teslas can, on my street here. I can punch bit. back. I can punch back. You know what I have, which you don't have? I have supercharging for free for life on my car. Um, I have solar panel on my roof and I have he a gets his electric Tesla battery on the wall. <laughs> He's got the power of the sun. I think you need to back down from this one here. Oh it's not quite God. free, but it, you I'm know, orange. It's, it's okay, I'm orange. That's what I have. I have nothing more it's to cheaper than gas. <laughs> gas here is six bucks a gallon right now, by the way. I, oh, don't complain. Spain, you know how much nine, it is in Europe? Eight. Do you know? Yeah, it's, 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 a it's almost eight or nine. Right. I'm, how much How much a liter is? are you paying? Uh, I'm not paying nothing because I'm driving for free from Tesla. Thank you, Elon. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but if you uh, had a gas car, how much? Is, uh, two it, two euros per a liter. That's what you. Pay. And there's four yeah, liters to well. almost four point fifty eight. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, it's a lot. So it's a lot. You're just paying so, nine bucks, eight. Nine, eight bucks, nine bucks, exactly. Nine bucks. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <right. laughs> That's exactly the reaction. Get electric, man. It's a lot cheaper. Put I'm electric. Solar, I'm, you know, you know, we got so, this nuclear radiator in the sky. You can collect the energy with a solar. I don't. Panel. Okay. Okay. Is Elon like? Did he give you the talking points or what? I know. I know. It's very <laughs> I had the good. first it's sales pitch. I can. T I can I, tell you I the know, sales pitch. I know. I think I sold so many Teslas in my life because I met people and I'm like, how is the Tesla? You know, especially in the beginning, they were like meeting me because when in 2000, when did I buy the car? 2015, like there was very few Teslas in Europe, right? And people met, met or saw the car and they came in and like, what is this? Why it's not making any noise? You know, they had no idea what it is, especially in Germany, very petrol head country. They were like, oh, yeah. what is this thing? And I had to explain, and they're like, "Oh my God, this can drive this amount of miles, and you know, per charge, and this is so cool." And I it goes zero to sixty Tesla. faster than a Porsche. <laughs> oh, for sure. I was making fun of a lot of Porsches actually in Germany I, at the time. I, I I laugh at Porsche people. Oh, my car's fun to drive. I'm like, yeah, but I was last night. I was in stop and go traffic for an hour and a half. Right? You really like to drive in a stop and go traffic? Yeah, no, exactly. I'm car's driving. I'm just yeah. sleeping. Turn autopilot. Just get a motorcycle. Best of both worlds. Oh, yes, yeah. traffic can be really fast at the same <laughs> gentlemen, time. Gentlemen, gentlemen, petrol hats. Wait, 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 wait. We have to go back to Vision Pro, right? There was the oh, there was yeah. a Vision. There was a Vision Pro like discussion. I have to, I have to, I have to be the organizer here. I have to kind of like derailed. <laughs> I, I put you. We back actually have to it. talk about the future, not the past. Oh, no, <laughs> exactly. that's true. That's true. That's true. Um, yeah. So I just want to say, like, we we had this we had this battle, and I think the bet was, um, I think the dinner or something. So Robert, when you're coming to Prague, I hope you do soon. Um, from at comments. least at least for Somnium Connect. I'll let you know more when uh, when it's actually happening. Um, Next year? Uh, no, no, no. Actually, well, much faster. You'll see. You'll see. Yeah. I, we're not. We're not uh, disclosing. Year, it's we're, not dis plan. we're not disclosing. Uh, actually, but you you will see. It's. Uh, I think it ho hopefully it will be doable. Uh, see, and then, uh, I can see this already. I'm not going to come to Prague, but I'm going to get a 4090 card and and join you virtually. Hmm. So I'm sure Somnium. Uh, that should know. be a thing you should set up there. Yeah, that's yeah. a good idea. Have that the, is. There'll be a this virtual is, thing. Have the VR he knows stage, how to play me. VR he knows world. how to play me. I cannot say ah. no to this. Oh my god! You got me, ah. Robert. You got me. Uh, I, I no, hate it's... getting it, man. The, 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 flying to Spain and back it was a pain in the ass. <laughs> just traveling in general, it's just oh, it's yeah, a slog, isn't it. it? Have you seen yeah, like okay? Same. Let's talk Vision Pro because I think it's a very yeah. important device, and I think it will again as much as. People hate to hear this. And again, I'm not an Apple fanboy. You remember, Robert, you said to me, you like, um, you know, I, I'm an Android head. I, I'm a PC user all my life. My first yeah. smartphone, like my first smartphones were all those, you know, Windows phones and, and pens yeah. and stuff. Then I bought yeah. the first iPhone, was the best phone I've ever had. Then then uh, iPhone started to fall back, uh, like, you know, Android caught up, like within a few years. Yeah. And I switched to Android. I never switched. Yeah, I never switched back, but... One and a half years ago, I said, look, I knew that Vision Pro is coming already. That was clear that they will announce it. And I bought myself uh, an iPhone and MacBook just to get into the ecosystem. I forced myself to do it because I wanted to understand and be ready when the Vision Pro is coming. Fast forward today, I have an iPhone, MacBook, and I use them like probably 15, 20% of the time of what I use uh, of your PC. I mean, I use iPhone quite a bit. Uh, like this recording is done on iPhone, amazing camera. I did, I, you know, I just flipped the phone. It recognizes it as a camera for the MacBook. Boom, I don't need any special cameras. The quality is hopefully good. Um, and the, the tying uh, you know, between the ecosystem is it's amazing. Really exactly. And that's what I want to bring it. So, so I'm an ecosystem right now and I can see the puzzle pieces, right? They introduced the new iPhones. They can record spatial videos right now. That's yeah. one piece, right? Another piece, they have new AirPods with the USB-C and everybody yeah, thought, look, that's, 
Yeah, and and they ever it's like that's just a new connector. But what they did is they changed the chip, which will work with the Apple Vision Pro exactly with 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 mm-hmm. without latency. And that's yeah. another big part of the good yeah. experience for the Vision Pro. Because they have an ultra wideband chip in here. And Ex- exactly. Else does. Now yeah. that's another piece of puzzle, right? And I think the spatial video is one of the things I said it when Apple Vision Pro was uh, announced officially. That moment when I saw that they are going to do those special memories and videos and stuff, I said that's the killer feature for me to be not not. I mean, I would use it for many other things, but. I think for many people and for myself as well, being able to rewatch your memories in a spatial 3D environment, it's magical. Like I use those Lumia pads, um, uh, you know, like with a 3D screen. It's yeah, very, yeah. very good. It's very yeah. good. And you kind of get I, I have the a point looking of... glass screen, similar. Thing. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And you kind of get it and you're like, wow, okay, this is amazing. But if you can do it natively in, uh, in Vision Pro. Have you seen this company? Um, I'll give them a shout out because um, they, they're doing uh, they're doing an amazing job. Um, uh, let me quickly uh, let me quickly find it. They are doing the same thing as Vision Pro, but they try to bring it for like quests. Um, it's called uh, Wist Wist Labs, and yeah, what they do Wist. is we'll put a video here somewhere. Ooh, magic. Uh, we'll put a video here of Wist Labs, and there is like a video where the guys in his room. And he opens up the, you know, he's in Quest uh, 3, I guess. And the room is empty, right? There's a, there's a sofa. And he opens up a menu and then clicks and then plays the memory. And then suddenly on the sofa, in the corner of the sofa, mother with a child appears, kind of like blend yeah. in. And this is just a recorded yeah. memory, the 3D memory. And then he watches it and then he just turns it off. And, and that, I think, is just imagine. Your, wait, you know, wait Vision Pro will that's do an AI that you can talk to. <laughs> okay, that's another. That's, uh-huh. yeah, that's what we do in Somnium, right? That's a, that's a live, that's a live forever mode we are bringing in Somnium. Like you will be able to record yourself actually already starting this year, and you'll be able yeah. to bring yourself back to life in a virtual environment. But imagine, imagine you are in Vision Pro, which I think will do it one thousand times better, more polished, and better, you know, quality and stuff. Your you can you can see your kids on the playing Lego on the floor of your flat ten years later. Yeah. That yeah. will bring tears into your eyes. I guarantee you. I just oh, yeah. guarantee you. This will I've be emotional. I've been telling people, just use your standard 2D camera and take a lot more video of your family. 100%. Certainly now that 100%. we're going into a holiday season when families get together, do yes. some vid- more videos because that'll matter to you 10 years from now when, you're, when your dad dies or... You know, my dad's gone, right? My, my dad my dad is gone right? too. And right? that's what so, actually kind of prompted me to do the Live Forever for Somnium. Um, yeah. because, because I think, you know, many people want to preserve the memories, um, yeah. and, and kind of like, not necessarily wait, wait until you see what the AI do. Do you, do you, uh, hand your video over to like Luma AI and turn it into a nerf or a, a Gaussian splat? No, no, no. I mean, that, I'll do it in some in I'll do it in some in decentralizer. You know me, right? I'm more of a decentralized yeah. guy. I don't, I don't yeah, want to have all my info videos. in Mark Zuckerberg's one. hand. I want AI to control control. Well, this is Luma AI. It's a little startup, but you, you I know, hand I know, a 2D I know. video to Luma and, and it creates a 3D scene out of the video. So you can seven amazing. years from now, you're going to do that just because, and you're going to take your 2D video that you filmed at Christmas time with your parents or something like that and turn it into a 3D scene and have them sitting on the couch with you, you know? Oh. Absolutely. You Absolutely. Yeah, this is going to happen. Right? Absolutely. And people think it's nuts and it's science fiction. It's actually happening very fast. Like, I think from the moment we'll, we're getting the, the Vision Pro to a moment where this will be a reality for many people, we're talking about maybe three, four, five years max. So by the end of the decade, we'll be doing it on a, on a daily basis. We'll be, we'll be in XR quite a bit of time at home. We will, we will use it for memories and video calls. Have you seen this new video of Vision Pro? Again, we'll put it somewhere here. Uh, of yeah. Vision Pro... Um, uh, of Vision Pro recording or uh, making your own avatar, this tutorial. Like all the sounds yeah, yeah. and have, it's it's just it's just well done. And again, yeah. Apple will revolutionize the industry where Meta or Facebook had seven years head start, and yet they will be yeah. playing catch up next year. It's incredible how they will be playing. It's, they it's need to so catch up because of a uh, uh, number of reasons. Uh, I agree with you. It, it, they'll have a product that people will also care For sure. about, right? For sure. and, and we should talk about where because. Last time we talked, I talked about what the first ver- version of uh, Vision Pro is. They have a second version coming a year later, which has us, a lot more GPU. Rumors. No, it's not just rumors. A lot more <laughs> GPU. 
right? So now you start thinking about all the neural radiance fields and the Gaussian splat kind of stuff. That's going to come in with the second version. Then a year later, they're coming out with a lightweight pair of glasses. And that's the main, that's the iPhone moment. That's when that's what's going to change. Regular people go, oh, that's what all what you, all you nerds with VR glasses were talking about, right? Yeah, I think so as well. And I, I'm not sure whether the pair of glasses will be that fast, like three years. I think it's more closer to 2030. Do you think? I don't uh, know. Robert knows three three years, years in the future. But you know, I I slip Siri four He's months just right myself. Now. So I, you know, <laughs> schedule. I am not arguing here. Early. Okay, I'm just. Play, yeah. Playing devil's advocate, okay? Just just playing that. Well, he, here's one. Why do you think there's so much new GPU in your new phone that you just got? No, no, I'm, you think, I mean... You think it's I just think... to play 2D video games on the on the surface bird. of the phone? <laughs> uh -uh, <laughs> it's for bird. the glasses. <laughs> Absolutely. Because right? if you have a pair of glasses with a uh, virtual screen, you need to have a lot of GPU to, to create scenes and things, screens for the glasses. So are we going to see like, also... more hook technology, do you reckon? Yeah. Oh, also, also, also for the cameras, right? I mean, you need a lot of processing power to process footage from the camera and to make spatial Makers. video. Like spatial video takes quite a bit of, um, you know, uh, processing power to 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 process and make it make it right. 3D thrill. Everyone loves them. And I think this make it right is what makes Apple stand out from other experiences let's call them experiences or uh you know some kind of like trials because they will have like you can do spatial video right now on quest 3 like you can record it with the phone stitch it together put it there and you will have a 3d image and it's okay like it's kind of okay but to make it right so that people will want to use it and it will feel magical that's where i think apple comes in to like really make the finish line right this last 10 percent which will feel magical Again, I hate to say this. Here's the real problem for Meta, because if, if I have a Quest 3 sitting on my coffee table at Christmas dinner, right, and I have a a, a, a Vision Pro, nobody's going to want to play with the Quest 100%. 3. 100%. <laughs> I agree with you. 100%. Maybe you'll, Everybody maybe wants like to a, see a, those 5K screens, because the chips in front of your eyes are 5K each. The Quest 3 only has 2K, right? Let's start with that. And and then you go into spatial audio. The audio is way better uh, on the Apple headphones than what, with Mark Zuckerberg's headphones. So, it, you know, this this is the power of Apple. The, and the true... Yeah. The, the, the tr sorry for interrupting. The, the true story is I, I own a Google Pixel Fold uh, phone. So I'm, I'm switching now from the Samsung Fold to Pixel Fold. Great yeah. phones, right? Both are amazing phones, um, best in their class, I think. Yeah. And for for the calls, I use iPhone the most. Why? Because of these guys. Because the spatial audio and the pass-through audio for the headphones are unbeatable. Yeah. I I tried and every high-end, you know, earbuds for Android and stuff. And nothing matches it. I have to say, unfortunately, guys, like if you have any tips, like just tip me because I mean, I, I'll buy them. I'll try them. But yeah. unfortunately, they don't because I want to hear the environment while I talk. And the seamless integration is so good. And that's where kind of I think, yeah, it's it, Apple wins. It's going to get worse this... for the Androids. All right. So I'm talking to you on an M1 Macintosh, right? Same here. Same here. 21% 20, yeah. of that chip is neural. It's not being used, <laughs> even though I have Rewind listening to us right now, taking uh -oh. notes, right? Oh, but Rewind only needs a few hundred milliseconds of that chip every 10 minutes to do a transcript, right? It doesn't need very much of that chip, and it's not being used. And it's been on my desk for two years, not being used. Yeah, tell <laughs> us. Wait, 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 wait. This is what Apple can do. They can put a huge amount of AI inferencing power on your desktop. Yeah. The, the, the M1 has something like more AI inferencing than an NVIDIA 3080 card has in it, right? And, and people don't know because Apple hasn't really turned it on, and they haven't really enabled developers to use it yet. Can you tell us rewind? Okay, let's let's stop here for a, for a second. Uh, rewind. Can you explain in 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 like in a few sentences what rewind is so that people know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Re rewind is the freakiest piece of software you've ever seen. It listens to everything you say, and it watches everything you do on your Macintosh. It takes a screenshot of everything I do and shrinks it down and puts it in a little file on my uh, on my desktop. So it knows everything I've ever done since I turned it on. 
so I can That's ask insane. good questions. Like, you know, w w tell me about the last time I talked to Arthur, right? Uh, and it'll know. And it'll <laughs> be able to show me the transcripts and be a memory aid. It's really a, a, an amazing piece of software. It's all running locally. So it doesn't do anything with the cloud, right? It's all running on that little M1, um, the neural capability. It's all AI. It's a large language model. So the, uh, do you just yeah. ask it questions like, what did I do? Or when I lost time? Like, what, what is the useful? Tell us like a few useful yeah. things you use it for, mainly. I, you know... I use it mostly for transcripts of of stuff and being able to copy and paste transcripts and do searches and stuff like that. Nice. Um, it's, it, I just started using it a couple months ago and I, I really haven't yet started. I, I don't have enough back mm -hmm. you know, uh, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. stored to really make it you after I do it for five years, it's going to be a lot more useful. Right. Um, but yeah, you, you can do some amazing searches and help with, you know, email. Cause it starts really knowing a lot about you right? and a lot so, about so what be you've like, been doing. I, I received an email on this date with this attachment. Where well, I no, it? you talk to it in English because it has a large language model, right? Oh. So you can just talk to it in English. Hey, can you find the oh, no. email I was talking to Arthur about? You know, I, and it pulls it up. Instant. It's like, wow. Yeah. Yeah. There was, yeah. by the way, there wasn't, uh, I think five years ago, <laughs> six years ago, even, there was an app uh, which was trying to do exactly the same. I don't remember the name. Yeah. I remember I contacted the founder because I found it fascinating. Uh, and they had to shut down. They they didn't find the market. And I think the AI was the missing piece because they were doing it via some smart record. Like it was a very good app, um, or at least the attempt was very good. But I think yeah. with AI, it kind of gives you much more superpower capabilities. Um, to uh, the large language model really was is the story <clears throat> of this year, right? Open AI's GPT four is is still the leader. It's completely mind blowing. I mean, I. I, I interviewed the three founders of Siri, right? Adam Chire actually ran the biggest AI group in the world at some point back in the 80s. He was working at, at SRI, the little lab that does all sorts of stuff for uh, military and other things. So was, was the first node of the of the internet, right? It was this lab. And uh, he, all three, I have it on video, all three said chat GPT shocked him in terms of what it could do. It, it can do things that Siri just had a lot of trouble. It still has a lot of trouble doing, right? And it it it's still changing. It's going to be changing the world for the years to come. Still, right? The large language model. I've seen. I have a, on X.com. I have four thousand companies now, AI companies that are most of which are using large language model in some way to try to build a new kind of company, right? By the way, by the way, if you guys don't follow Robert on X, you don't exist. So we'll put somewhere the, 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 somewhere the you link will be. You are exactly you are AI. It's a lot harder you're, on you're Facebook fake. You're to fake. find all you're these fake. companies or LinkedIn, right, and put them in a list where I can share it with people. You know. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I I follow you for a long, long time. Um, and and uh, you you like I can see your, let's call it a, a a an evolution where you you talked a lot about um the metaverse in the past and you know the 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 other stuff and. I think this year you really, really, in a really good way, by the way, in a very professional way, leaned into AI, like yeah, all in. Just was like I follow you, and just I see a lot of useful information there. I'm following seventy thousand people, all in the AI space. I'm just gonna the just gonna PhDs, follow Robert, yeah. founder, <laughs> oh investors. Right. I follow if I find somebody who's working in AI, I'm following. Them. <laughs> you, know? so. you said I don't exist if I don't follow, so I'm just doing it now. <laughs> okay, you get one more follower from this. Okay, be, be careful. I, I I like a lot of things, so you'll no, start you seeing like a lot a of AI stuff. <laughs> Well, my but anyways, yeah. this large language model, now I can talk to my computer in a new way, right? Because it understands my language and it can, can it can translate my language to any other language like German, right? And can talk to the language. It's it's stunning how, how good it is. And now we're heading into a place where we can talk about the future. Because okay. soon we're going to have a class. Yeah, yeah, we're going to have a pair of glasses. I mean, the Vision Pro is all right, but you're not going to wear it to the shopping mall. You're not going to wear it. I will. All. I will. 
Because you're a nerd, but you know, <laughs> all right. There's a few nerds who will. You know? <laughs> Quest three, you I won't walk around with because the pass through is really bad. But the Vision Pro, I will. Vision so Pro I just take you to a nightclub. Just don't have any alcohol, and like I say, you just fall over from the wobbliness. You'll be fine. Uh, no, it, it, yeah, you know, it, it it it'll be dorky. That's the only problem. The, <laughs> Where I'm going with, with this is in a few years, you're, we're going to have a pair of lightweight glasses that do the same thing. Oh, I can't wait for that. Pro oh, does, wait. Right. And in, in the glasses, you're going to have virtual beings that you can talk to, right? Insomnium space. Right? Soon I'm going to have a virtual being around me. I can meet a human or I can meet an AI and the AI I can talk to. About anything. When in some, anything. Exactly. In some yeah. space, you'll be able to just turn on the green screen feature and basically it will cut off. It, you can do it now already, but like you, it will cut off all the environment and just leave your avatar next to you. So you'll be able to meet with your friends while you see the pass through, but they will be kind of like in your environment, um, yeah, those VR awesome. avatars. So that will be kind of like our version of the path through thing because, you know, we're a virtual reality world. In the first place, like you, yeah. you, you, you go to some new, just cut off the real life. You don't want to have like real life, and you want to just dive into some crazy worlds of imagination and uh, God knows what else. Uh, but yeah, some pass through thing will be will be uh, super useful. And to to me, I just I just wanna I just wonder like when I saw that um, the whistle up and or or the 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 three D video, it hit me because. Imagine this, like I give you a scenario and I, and you tell me if it's cool or not. If, I am the king of the world, baby. Do you think that's will that's will pick up or, or not? But I okay. think what we'll see is, let's say you're walking in Prague or somewhere in US in your city, right? And people with their phones, with their iPhones or with Vision Pros or with, you know, next class or whatever, they will record spatial videos at that place of that of some moment and they will anchor it physically to that place and you will be walking yeah. with the with with the vision pro and you will come to you will come to that point it will tell you that there's like some video and you will see for example like you know you you turn like let's say Prague castle and you will turn the video on and you will see like car accident no you you will see some people talking or some some really fantastic moment of other people in that scenario they will not physically be there but you will see them as if they were there i yeah. think this will be a new way of how to share content uh among each other and i think it will be just fantastic it, it will be magical um and i think a lot of people will be exploring surroundings because many people think like oh we're going they, they accuse me like oh you're building vr you want people to sit at home they will never see each other again and i always tell them no vr makes people more social it will yeah. make people more active social and you know make them explore the world more totally. than less. so like modern this, Pokemon is big, this is a big problem of explain of showing people why 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 that is true right if you use a program called nanome in vr you, you which is designed for material scientists chemists and stuff like that it um when I when I used it, they blew up the uh, COVID uh, virus as big as my house, and I could see the chemical structure of the, the virus. Right? That, oh, there's an oxygen, there's a carbon, right? And standing next to me was three scientists who were in in the space virtually, Amazing. in yeah. their own headsets, right? And they were able to point to things, high five me, you know, and and tell me, teach me about the virus, and show me how a vaccine <laughs> might attack the virus or something like that, right? You can't do that on a two D screen. So I, I agree. I agree. I absolutely agree. And um, I, I think I think this is this is something you know uh, coming into into the future. Okay. Now one second. We you said something. A... You said something though about uh, you know VR is heading in a, a place where where it's going to be much more social. Take it to some something like uh, Yosemite National Park. Right. I don't know if you've ever been there, but if you go to Yosemite National Park and you're standing at Glacier Point, you see the entire valley in front of you. You see the Yosemite Falls in front of you. You see uh, Half Dome over here. You see uh, El Capitan down there. You, even there, you're going to put on a headset. Oh, 100%. And people like, people <laughs> like why, no, why would you ever wear VR in a national park like this? Well, I've already done it at the Eiffel Tower. There was a rental, uh, a VR rental uh, shop at the base of the Eiffel Tower. 
and you rented a VR headset to go up in the tower, why would you do that? Paris is one of the most beautiful cities in the world, right? But you put on a VR headset and it takes you to the Louvre and it takes you to the Arc de Triomphe and it takes you to the Diorsay Museum, right? It takes you around the town so you can see and plan out your day. You know, you take it off, you enjoy the analog, the the, the reality analog, that's in brilliant. front of you <laughs> and you put on the VR headset and then you you make out plans and you can see the town in a whole different way, right? And same thing at Yosemite National Park, you put on a pair of glasses well, now it can tell you the stars that you're seeing above your head. It can tell you the plants that are around you. It, it can tell you the mountain ranges around you. And and then a, a virtual uh, a ranger can appear and start giving you the history. It can actually visualize stories. freaking dinosaurs when they were there and all the wow. other stuff. Can you imagine? Or the, and, or the glaciers that caused yes. the valley to be formed. You could show Absolutely. what that looks like. And a quest and giver. The, and, <laughs> yeah, what, when you want to play like a... No, I... All this, I can just picture, like you know, like World of Warcraft, just going back to being nerdy again. You put your glasses on, and there's quest, virtual quest givers to go to different places of the world. Great to meet you. Or different, yeah. like in your of area. Of course, oh, and they no, will, they will no. reward you for that. But not even yes. this. Like I, I when 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 Vision Pro has been uh, announced, I we're walking down the street with friends, and I said, guys, just stop for a second, look around, and we're in Prague again, the most beautiful, one of the most beautiful cities in the world. Period. Yeah, and we're in the city center, like. You know, our office is literally in the city center with all these beautiful towers and stuff. And I said, like, just look around yourself. In a couple of years, not wearing glasses while you're outside will feel empty, will feel like analog, because you will know that you're missing so much more information. You know, this very famous like CGI videos, um, they were popular like a couple years ago when like the person is on the bus and then they see all the ads. It will be kind of like this, but less clutter, less ads, obviously, and things like that. But yeah. it will be useful because imagine you're in a meeting, you see the name of the person, you can, you know, look at their LinkedIn profile. And it's like, hey, Robert, we never met, but I see you worked at this company. I worked there 10 years ago. Boom, you have a conversation right there happening immediately. You We're know, already without... seeing this with augmented reality with the Google Maps, right? If you're right. in, a, uh, I was just in uh, Barcelona using Google and Apple Maps to navigate around the city as I'm walking around. It shows you the street names on the buildings, right? Virtually. Yeah. And it shows you, oh, go down this aisle, right? With arrows on the buildings. It's like, oh, this is how the world is going to work. Imagine it's in the, in the glasses. Boom. Yes. Yeah. Way but, but, better in glasses instead of having to hold your phone up and look at the buildings to see, you know, which alley you're supposed to go down in Rome or something like that. Now you just wear the glasses and it can show you. Right, one hundred percent, one hundred. And when people tell me like, why you you know you would ne Apple Vision Pro will never be used outside, I said it will be the first thing people will do, including myself. I'll go outside, of course. I'll go, go for a drive. Try it out. <laughs> Nerds will. It's too big and too dorky, and and ah, also it's, it's just not built for that. It's like you, you'll find you'll find that it doesn't work very well in bright sunlight. So this is going to be a problem for the first. The first look, one look. is designed it cannot be worse. It cannot be worse than Meta Quest 3. So if it's if it's better than that, all it, good. It'll be about the same or better than that, but it's no, not it really be designed. It be for, it's a dorky device. It's covering your eyes. It, you know, me and you will do it because we're nerds. But normal everyday people, no, no, no. But we can start pre predicting where it will go, yeah. right? In five yeah. years, people yeah. are going to have a lightweight pair of glasses on. Yep. And that's when you are going to walk around the street. I remember I remember the day when I bought, because when I had an iPhone, then I had few Android phones. And then I yeah. saw on my trading desk, I saw with the corner of my eye, the ad from Samsung introducing the first Galaxy Note. Yeah. And that phone for that time was huge, huge, was incredibly big. Okay. That was like a size of people. So I a saw tablet. the phone with a, with a pencil, with a, you know, S Pen. And I said, oh my God, it captivated me. I bought it right, right then. And like one week later, I bought it. And all the colleagues were like, oh my God, you have an umbrella. You can play ping pong, <laughs> like all those jokes, you know? And I said, guys, you don't get it. Like you don't understand. Every phone will be the size of this phone. And this is the future. And they were making fun of me. And then five years later, they were all happy, you know, wearing the big phones. I'm like, hey, by the way, what about the umbrella? Do you remember? 
they all kind of, you know, it's the, it was the trend setting phone. Like the size of the screens, they they nailed it at that time. The 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 note was actually too small. Now it's much bigger. Um, and it's the same. Like people will make fun of it. I remember people making fun of Tesla when I like when Elon has introduced the first like concept of Model S. Um, that right about that time, I put all like I had trading, you know, trading. Everybody thought a- he was an idiot for starting a car. Co- I had the first ride. He gave me the first ride in serial model number one of the Roadster. I had the first pitch. I was <laughs> video streaming it on a Nokia <laughs> phone. I was still. Sto- that's that's making him sad. How long ago? <laughs> do you have that video? Do you have that video ago, still? Right? Do you have that video still somewhere? No, the video has gone. I have the pictures, uh, but the, the video has gone. But can, can you send us some pictures? We'll put them here in the in the show. Is it possible? Yeah, yeah you to- can search for uh, Scoble Calica because we were racing Jason Calica. Oh, okay, Jason Calica. All right. Yeah, yeah. So I have pictures. There's there's lots of uh, blog. We'll posts put them about it. somewhere. But anyways, know, you know, exactly. <laughs> everybody thought he was an idiot for starting a car company. Nobody had built a, uh, yes. a, a profitable car startup in, in a hundred years, right? So, and and imagine, and imagine. So yeah. I I saw the I saw the I knew the roadster, I knew the Tesla, and then I saw the concept Model S, and I loved it. You know, you remember there's a gray picture of the concept of Model S. Again, we'll put it here somewhere yeah. because it was so beautiful, and I, it captivated me because I believe that you know electric car, yeah, it is the future. And I put, I had five screens in Germany. I was working in Germany as a trader, right? And I had yeah. five screens at a trading uh, floor. And all those five screens had that car on them. And y- you have to imagine, Germany is a very petrol and nationalist. In, all in right, how many Cybertruck pictures do you have on your wallpaper now? No, zero, zero. Look, oh, look, man, I, that, that's the hottest uh, thing in Silicon Valley. I have Everybody to say, is talking about I have to say, the Chinese are getting me with their cars right now, man. I'm uh, getting... They don't have Cybertruck. <laughs> yeah, they are. But they have some really... They have flying they cars. They have nice cars. They have Neo flying and cars like already. It's, it's, but... it's, it's official. They're allowing them on the streets. They have flying cars next year. Um, you can yeah, get yeah. a driver license for them. But anyway, I want to say... Cybertruck's people... bulletproof, man. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Look, listen. <laughs> I, listen. Did you see the streets in Prague? Like, if I park Cybertruck in Prague, nobody will ever go through the street anymore. Like, it will be completely blocked because the whole truck will be the size of the nah, street, Europe you know? is too small man the, the exactly are little tiny exactly, tiny streets, exactly. It's, it's like one <laughs> one one way but what i wanted to say is like i had all the tesla model s screens um wallpapers on my screens and people were coming to me and they were like what is this is it like a golf cart they were making fun of the of the tesla and i said you don't get it guys like you will be challenged and then when i was working um, at you know, I was a trader at an energy utility in my previous company. I was doing the charging stations for electric cars, right? And as a part of my business, um, I went to Audi uh, and the headquarters, and I had meeting with some you know high level uh, managers and and uh, and you know vice presidents, whatever. And I came there by Tesla, right? Um, and uh, and kind of like we started to, to to talk, and they and and they said to me. I said a bit about the Tesla and like, oh, Tesla. And I said, like, any problem with the Tesla? And they said, Tesla, you know, we make, uh, Tesla makes cars and we make automobiles. And I said, guys, I think you're missing the point. I think they will (laughs) challenge you very hardcorely soon. You probably want to buy one and have a look at it very closely because if you have this kind of mindset, you will be in trouble. And fast forward, what, seven years? They are in troubles and they are I, selling much less cars. I give I mean, a speech is... to my to Mercedes Benz's R and D uh, group. All the car companies do their R and D here in Silicon Valley, right? Because all the all the all the bleeding edge software people are here. And I was like, this was after the Model S had come out. This was like mm-hmm. ten years ago. And I was, and I was like, why do you guys have a knob between the seats to control the screen? <laughs> Right, because back then Mercedes had a knob between the seats. Yeah, exactly. To, to control the UI on the screen, and they're like, "Well, we tried to get them to change to what Tesla's doing with the touchscreen, but the Germans said uh, we don't want fingerprints on the glass." That was a real answer from exactly, exactly people in the. In and I Mercedes believe it. Benz. I lived there for ten years. I had years. the first ride in the in the Mercedes Benz autonomous car. They get me the first ride at CES. They get me a car to drive to CES. Right. Um, and so, cause I had a famous innovation blog for a long time. And, um, I asked him, uh, when are you going to put a computer in the glove compartment that always uploads and up, always, uh, downloads and updates? And Which stuff? year was it? Which year was it? 10 years ago. 10 okay. Years 10 years ago. ago. Mm-hmm. Oh, right. 
Oh, we can't do that. We're Mercedes Benz. We're gonna. We're scared of getting hacked. The the, the, the <laughs> management. The management won't let us do this. You know, they had it. They had it. They had built it. It was like Xerox Park. Remember Xerox Park? Xerox absolutely funded, uh, this really cool R and D de department in Silicon Valley, but they didn't know what to do with it because they were all copier people. They didn't understand personal. And computers. Steve Jobs saw it. Yeah. And yeah, and he, he he bought them, all right. And yeah. so same thing, you know. And I went through five questions like that, you know. What are you going to do about Tesla? Can't compete because we're Mercedes <laughs> Benz. We're big fucking company. We don't want to do all this weird shit. That oh, I I remember during that meeting in Audi, um, the guys said, I said like, why? What what makes you say things like that about it? Like why why? Yeah, but why are you all laughing at Tesla? And the guy said like, look at their. Like, look at their interior quality, okay? It's really bad. Like, it's rubbish. And I said, guys, guys, okay, let me stop you here. I said, what do you think is easier? To learn how to make interior or to learn how to make batteries, good computers, software, autonomous driving, and everything else? Who do you think will win? And again, fast forward for today, Tesla is doing good interiors. And, you know, Chinese are actually killing it in interiors. They are making an absolute killer and but here's have... the problem. BYD is putting a fuckload of knobs. One of the problems with knobs. Yeah, BYD is not even is... a fuckload you know, of car I'm talking about. <laughs> no, that's the number one car company in China right yes. now, right? BYD. Yes. They make yes. more cars than uh, Tesla does, right? They're electric, but they have a fuckload of knobs on their dashboard because they're going for the old customer who then wants to knob. touch things. Only one knob that but, should be allowed. No, no, no. The, 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 the no, touch no, screen. No, no, no. Okay, 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 gentlemen. One second, one second. BYD is very smart because they do a lot of cars, electric cars, like what you say with knobs and stuff for old customers to transition them. But they have sub brands which are producing crazy electric cars. Just Google what sub brands BYD has to produce the new, you know, high power electric cars, kind of like a Tesla's of, of China. They do a lot. They do actually a lot of really cool cars. So I think they're kind of trying to win all the, and that's why they sell a lot of cars. They said that's why they're number one selling uh, selling brand there because they try to give you something they're, and use they something sell them because they're cheap and cheap as well. They, make they don't. Lot, put, they make a lot of cars for cheap, and yeah. they have their own battery manufacturing. Cheap, you say. number that's two, right number two by the time. <laughs> they kick out those. They kick out cheap cars, man. They, they, the Chinese are really good at making things cheap. <laughs> I have a cheap car. Uh, I've still scale, got a gear right, stick. You know. I've still got a clutch pedal. I'll yeah, do I have me. no idea what it is. <laughs> there we Can go. Can you explain right. it to us? What, what, what <laughs> you don't know? No, Unfortunately, I know. <laughs> look, look, guys. I was taught to drive on the ladder. So don't tell me. <laughs> don't tell me. Picture. What, what, how to drive, how to picture. I'll, I'll show the picture of this car. So you don't tell me, my friends, what it means to drive with a stick. I okay, a, I, I remember. Have a turbocharger and it's two wheel drive. That's it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, no, I mean, look, my Model S. Uh, people were saying like, ah, the car will fall apart in three years. Eight and a half years later, I still drive the same car, the same battery, no problem at all. No problem at all. Mine's Literally. five years old, hundred thousand miles, right? Same, like yeah. absolutely yeah. no problem at all. So I can only say like, guys. I had problems because and... mine's one of the first 10,000 made. And um, I had in the first year, I had a new battery put in, a new engine, a new headlight, a new charging cable. Uh, they had a lot of problems in the early days. So it right? sounds like it's totally oh, early, but, like, look, of course. But I haven't had problems for years now, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. It's, it's okay. I mean, first of all, if you have a problem, that's very important how company addresses the problem. And Tesla in the beginning has been very good in addressing all of the concerns, right? Uh, right now they don't oh, have that, those I got problems. to drive a Model S for a month while they were fixing all this shit. <laughs> Keep that one. I, I wasn't one. too unhappy, you know. I got to drive a big ass nice uh, Tesla. Right? I remember yeah. they gave me P100D uh, as, a, as, as a loaner for two days. My wife said never again because I was sprinting from the red lights. <laughs> it's just, just like you know, like. I was yeah, already like, all like, the time. Oh my god! Everywhere. <laughs> She's like, "Why are you doing it?" I'm like, "I'm doing nothing. I'm just touching the gas pedal. Like, I'm doing nothing." Yeah. yeah. Gas pedal. You, are you gonna buy one of these new Model Ss? They do zero to sixty in uh, one point eight seconds now. One point nine seconds. I have to. Like say, I have crazy. to say, I'm looking at the cars, and and I'm so comfortable in my car because it has no problems, and I have a free charging, and it's a great car. I have no reason to change. Like literally, yeah. I I I yeah. just don't want right now. Maybe one yeah. day, maybe. 
But maybe then I'll go for a Chinese car because the amount of technology they put in their cars right now in terms of like you the, u- the user. <laughs> no, I, you think I, might. No, you I think I might. I the, think I might. I think I might. Okay, here's sorry. another. Here's another. This is something I know a lot about AI and the Chinese do not have the AI for the world. They don't have the data. They don't have the engineers and they don't have the technology. So I you're disagree. not going to buy a Chinese car if you want full self-driving, which is what you're going to want in your next car. When it's coming, because we're hearing for full self driving already for like seven years. When when is I've had it for five button? years? It couldn't change lanes when I first got it. Now it's driving yeah, me all around town. Right? Yeah, no, no, it's but really what, good. What, when when is it coming? Like where you will be able to just let it let it drive and not even bother? Like when when is Elon pushing that button? No human in the oh. car. The, the no, real no, question is when can I send? No, my you car are there, to... but it's driving for you. Like no, you no, don't I want it. I want no human. Let's make okay. the rules. So, wh- no when human is, in the car. No human. When it's coming. He knows, look. Possible in a year. <laughs> oh. Um, <laughs> needs another year after that to get rid of any last pr- problems and make the error rate go way, way, way down, right? And then you need another two years to get it past regulators. And you're talking about Tesla. You're talking about Tesla. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Four years. Uh, four years. Like Four years now. where it's driving robo-taxi. So would it be like- Four years. Four years. So I can- Okay, let's do a bet. Let's do a bet. Yeah. I think, I think in four years, like up to five years, let's say five years from now, I think Chinese will have no human cars as well. Yeah. But only in China, they don't have the data of everybody else. Maybe, maybe. I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying like they will, but also honestly, Tesla doesn't have so much data about the European, like it's less cars here. So I'm not sure whether they will have a lot. Enough they have data. more US, cars have... than anybody else. Nobody else has cars True. driving across, you know, True. like the Golden Gate Bridge. I go and watch cars on Golden Gate Bridge. Do you think There's Tesla only Teslas, nobody else. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So yeah, I think five years in China, they will have full self driving cars, no problem. They'll be zipping around, uh, no humans there. In Europe, I don't know how to say, honestly, because also, don't forget- Your streets even if are Tesla... narrow, man. No, Your no, streets are really streets. narrow. The legislation you, you is You have a stupid. lot of chaos. EU legislation will never allow it. They were like, oh my God. You know, you remember, so when I bought Tesla and they switched on, probably half a year after I bought it, they switched on the autopilot, right? Yeah. And then they were iterating every two weeks. There was an update and it became like in three months, it became so much better. So it was so yeah. usable. And then I started to use it on autobahns, on highways. And my yeah. personal record, because in the first days of it, in my, my personal record was driving 135 kilometers distance without touching a wheel once. And yeah. then EU came and the I know because I, I heard about it, the lobby from, from automakers, from German automakers came in because they were so pissed on Tesla that Tesla was overtaking them so fast. They came in yeah. and they lobbied EU to make a new rule that every 30 seconds you need to touch the wheel. So Tesla pushed an update and now it bothered me, bothers me every 30 seconds because before that, Tesla was only bothering me when it recognized that there is a lot of traffic and some lane changes. It said, hey, by the way, you want to kind of, you know, take the wheel now I need to do it every 30 seconds. So I have to like put the, with the hand on the wheel and do it. Yeah. And of course I'm watching the road, but I'm just saying like it made it worse. Like it, it was yeah. really good. Then EU made it a bit worse. So I'm not sure about full set driving in the European Union. It will be very, You'll very You'll see tough. it soon. The, the version hopefully, 12 hopefully. software stack that's coming is un- insane. The, the, all right, here's a, here's a different way to look at it. Take it out of cars. We're heading toward robots. I just met a guy who works on Optimus. He told me in a year and a half, Optimus has learned more tasks than Boston Dynamics has learned in 13 years. The speed of learning is faster for Tesla's AI than anybody else's. Why? Because they have the car fleet. Yep. They, they have, have the, data. My car fleet is taking And Twitter, video. and Twitter. And now they have Twitter. Bingo. <laughs> And that's why you're going to buy a Tesla autonomous car over somebody else because the Chinese okay, don't have okay. X.com. I'll do I, it. I, I, I'll I can do see it. how this is going. I'll, I'll do it. Back. Elon, okay. I'll do it. I'll do it again. I mean, please bring the full self-driving. I'll do it again. I mean, Model X is a very... I mean, I have two kids, so next one probably will be a bigger one, Model X. Bring out a Tesla uh, motorcycle. That's what we need. One Tesla of them. motorcycle. Oh. See, I'd it, love it. I'd love electric motorcycle. If you're in America, you want a Cybertruck, right? <laughs> I mean, it's an amazing car. Cybertruck would be good. <laughs> I guess uh, if you're in Germany on the on the autobahn, you'd want a Model S or mm-hmm. something, right? 
have, have you have you seen the cyber truck in real life already uh-huh several times yeah it's and how insane. does it how insane yeah i it's can fucking imagine insane it it it's polarizing people either really love it or really hate it right like that's the ugliest thing i've ever seen on the road or that's the, that's most the coolest thing. thing i've ever seen yeah, yeah, right? yeah i think it's the coolest yeah. thing it's definitely the yeah. cool. it looks but very it good stands it stands out good. It stands out. It's noticeable and it's futuristic when you see it. It it looks futuristic. And you know where the genius is? It's much easier to produce. Much easier to well, produce. Well, the steel is a little bit weird to to bend and put on the on the vehicle. So there is some problem there, but it doesn't have any paint. So they yes. got rid of I know the Fremont people a lot, right? My my car was made at the Fremont factory and they they had a lot of problems with the paint shop, right? Getting the paint right, getting it thick enough, getting it to be durable enough, uh, getting it to be at scale, you know, and, and work. And that's why Elon's like, how the fuck do we get rid of the paint shop on the factory? <laughs> It does like yeah, it's cool right. to not have any pain in the in the background. Like, oh my god, finally we got rid of the no, pain. No, no, yeah. put a problem solved. You know, yeah. <laughs> Shoda, tell um, us when do the... you change your car with a stick to uh, something more uh, futuristic? When it's coming? What's <laughs> the date? Well, what, I went what from needs an Audi, to happen? I went from an Audi A5 to a, a VXR because I wanted something small and nippy. I've always been motorcycles. But you have I've a kid. motorcycles. Yeah, you have family. When are you going to oh, get we've an got a bus. motorcycle? We've got I'm a bus starting to see electric doors. motorcycles. If they yeah. make your electric, I mean, the only because they go fast, my... man. These electric bikes that people are having around. Oh town. no, they're like the zero. Oh man, they got they're like zero to sixty fast, right? You know, you can. They're get incredible. Into the, the issue over in in in, oh, in England it is. Everyone's and they make no school. noise. They it's yes. not like a Harley Davidson. There's a pop, 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 yeah, right? you know? that, that's what because in my day job, I work for um, a motorcycle retail company. Ah. And no one is driving electric bikes over here. They they just want loud, proud Harleys, G, uh, BMW GSs, or sports yeah. bikes still. And until they make something that's just going to knock the socks off, yeah. it'll be a while. But if it comes, I'm, I I'm, think that, I'm I think the next everybody generation... wants to be Valentino Rossi, you know, drive exactly. Down, you, know. <laughs> you are I think, that think, skill, uh, though. I think the next generation. Rocket. The next generation of bikes, motorcycles, will be uh, my personal opinion. I'm not in bikes at all, by the way, so I might be completely wrong. But my opinion is, um, you know, like it will be not self-driving, self-driving, but it will be self-balancing. I think those self-balancing yeah, yeah. bikes, which could yeah. do, which will help you, like you know, like this, um, uh, the Tesla Roadster, the new one, will have thrusters, so it will self-correct on the on the on the turn, so you'll be able to go sharp turns much faster. That's what the See? Elon promises. But it'll like, make everybody Valentino Rossi. You can get the <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> the self the self balancing bike will will take you for a ride. You will I be able to put to my do knee down or anything. It will just do it for me. Yeah, yeah it will be. You do it. I saw Valentino Rossi do a do a, a wheelie down uh, Indy, right D down the whole way. You know, can it can it do that for you automatically? Oh, that that would be a good idea. I mean, we've got oh. anti wheelie. We could surely do enable wheelie. AI wheelies, just hold it for you. Uh, yeah, you, you heard it first yeah. here, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. AI wheelie, okay? That's AI that's wheelies. The, AI wheelies. This is, this, is the, this is the term we anchor, okay? We just anchor it here. AI wheelies. <laughs> Okay, I mean back to back to what you guys are doing. What you know, so what's going on in the uh, metaverse and the XR space? You know, you, you're you're so, building a headset now. I mean, that's crazy. Yeah, I mean, we I are, tried to talk you out of that shit, but you know, we, we're building headset. I mean, uh, I've you know, in in my opinion, because I see a lot of so all the companies, by the way, and there's like four, not so many to be honest, who are making the headsets or five. Yeah. Um, they're all pivoting to um kind of like they're trying to do consumer wearable things standalone okay which is again i think for apple and meta is legit because they know how to do it for the rest it's very very hardcore catch-up game they don't know how to do the software right blah blah blah. anyway they all try to do it they all pivoted directly to like consumer wearables and and i see a lot of need because pc vr for enthusiasts ain't going anywhere you know the yeah. full immersion people who are running you know 4090s and pushing it to the limit and developers and universities and all of this stuff, it's not going anywhere. And I am missing a great headset. And I was missing already like several years ago, a great headset, which can be, first of all, open source. So it's open and you don't have like hidden licenses or like, you know, this Kirks and it has, you know, it's a very high, uh, high resolution headset. 
It has very precise tracking, which is a lighthouse tracking, still the best tracking out there. Um, it, it has amazing panels. It has eye tracking, hand tracking, you know, um, all the peripherals, three USB-Cs. Like I was missing that killer headset and I was looking around and no company was actually doing it. And 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 I said, look, we need to do it ourselves. If we as Somnium Space, as the platform, if we need to stay relevant and if we want to control, not the control, but if you want to have a, still a pathway to our customers, which yeah. will not be taken by three big giants in a wall gardens, we need to build our own avenue to our customers. And that was the premise of the headset. And that's why I started to, to build it. By the way, hardware is fucking hard, okay? It's expensive <laughs> to build. It's hard to build. Um, and it's a hell of a journey. I, like used to, now... I used to work for a video capture card company back in the 90s. We fucked up the mold. It cost $100,000, took another month, right? Building these kinds of things. Tell me. I know done. exactly what you're talking about. So so what, yeah. what I'm saying is hardware is hard, but we are, we are after two and a half years, we're at the finish line. We're starting the production. I'm very proud that we're producing it in Europe locally. So we're making, you know, we're making the, the, the places for, for people to work. Uh, we're contributing to the local economy. We're doing this super high quality headset. Uh, we're doing it in a, in a in a very reasonable price, and we're doing the most high quality PCVR headset which probably ever existed for consumers. And and you know it excites me. It excites me because we are open sourcing the eye tracking algorithms. We're open sourcing and giving access to all the cameras and all the hardware parts of the headset, so that if you're uh, a developer, exactly. And and because Apple. I, Apple Apple is not going to do yeah, Apple will give shit you zero. Gonna... <laughs> zero. Exactly. <laughs> no, Apple has the eye sensors, but they're not going to let developers do too you know, much with took those. Them their and, and they're storing everything on the local headset, right? They're exactly. not they're not going to so, let that go up to the cloud, you know. So all the freaky shit I'm going to have to do on the Somnium. <laughs> yeah, so that that's the Ooh. hardware part, right? Hardware part needs to be open, needs to be accessible by developers, and that's my belief, and it needs to be high quality. Like we are, you know, Apple brings um the 4K per eye, like 3.8K per eye uh, displays. Our displays are 2.9K. So Apple has like 20, uh, 32 million pixels. We have 20, uh, 22, 23 million pixels in our headset. Mm-hmm. And and this resolution, like starting from 2.9K per eye, you don't see pixels. Like you just, eye, your, your eye doesn't see it. Apple wanted to be, you know, they wanted to do you all that. It has its own downside and a lot of upsides as well. So, yeah. you know, we are bringing the headset, which will serve they, people their for five plus screens years. are going to look better, right? If you're watching a movie in the Cor- Apple headset. Cor- correct. And look also, look, it's all about trade-offs a bit. Right now, you know, yeah. building hardware, I know, like, if you if you want to have a big field of view, because for me, field of view is important. Yes, Apple Apple has 100 degrees, 105 degrees field of view. Yeah. We're bringing so you 100... can still see a little bit of an edge. Correct. Right. We're 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 bring, we're bringing 125, and that is a big ah. difference. Like you you are you are suddenly you are watching you're you're seeing with peripheral visions. Like for people who are playing flight simulators, for social VR is important because if you are talking to people yeah. um, around you, and we'll we'll put some picture here. There's a there's a nice picture uh, to demonstrate this. If you're you know if there's a group of people around you, you if in the small headset you don't see them. Like you don't see half of the people standing uh, talking to you. But with our headset, you will be able to see that. And I think this is important. So we're kind of like a little bit looking at social VR. So that's again, that's the hardware part. Open source, um, letting people develop with it. We sell you device. All our partners, like for example, hand tracking and stuff, we'll announce some really cool stuff. But we give you license, which you don't need to worry. Whether you are a developer or a consumer or a company, we say. No strings attached. You buy our hardware, yeah. you own it, no licensing. You can do what if you own if you earn $25 billion with this headset, good for you. We don't want anything from you. We just want you to be happy with our hardware. So that's kind of our hardware journey. And the software journey, you know, you've been there and we're now already for a year and a half, we're working on a new update for Somnium. We're making our platform more open, more versatile, uh, more beautiful, obviously, more immersive. Yeah. And we let developers do basically everything they can just go take the game they already developed and port it into somnium they can yeah. put it there and they can start monetizing it in a decentralized way again and again we are not taking your things hostage you own your data on somnium you control your data everything you record for live forever mode with ai it's on your computer and only if you so you're not taking 30 percent like apple's gonna take no it, if no, apple's, no if no. let's say you uh you, you do 5%? the same thing in the apple yeah yeah <laughs> Five percent. We're, we're, we're taking five percent. And by the way, 
you can yeah. take any object from someone because these are non-blockchain, these are NFTs, and you can go and sell it outside in any other marketplace for free. You don't even need to ask me, uh, you know, a thing. So only if we will be good, if we will provide you enough of a good user experience, you would do it in our on our marketplace and you, you will pay yeah. us 5%. But if you really hate me, which might happen, if you really hate me, please don't. But if you do, you will just take it away on the other marketplace because you can, it's decentralized and you will sell it without paying me anything. So that's kind of my my theory. I want to have meta metaverse cannot be centralized it because it's a wall garden. It's not a metaverse anymore. Yeah. It's a wall yeah. garden. And I believe in an open metaverse where people and users have full control over their digital lives. Like you just, yeah. as much as I love how Apple will approach Vision Pro and as much as I hate meta for what meta is, it's, you know, it's a closed ecosystem it's it's yeah. something they control and you have zero power over those companies like zero yeah. and that is a very very slippery slope and i think we need some kind of counterbalance on the other side and that's what we try to be we're trying to be this counter you know counterbalance for that rent that's over that's the way we're that's the world we're in we're in a, a you know an apple world <laughs> and you're For coming in and selves, going, hey there's just a different way to do it. Our physical selves yeah yeah well I mean, you know D developers are going to get sick of the rules. Uh, they're not going to be able to do much about it because all the rich people are going to have apples. Um, but, you know, there ne there needs to be somebody like you pu pushing the world be and pushing Apple because Apple needs some competition and they don't have it. Yeah, we, we need to, I, I, don't, I, you know, I, I don't try to kind of imagine my, not, not imagine, like I'm not naive enough to think that I'll push Apple or, you know, we'll become like, I hope we'll become bigger in terms of, you know, grow with our users. Um, I'm not trying to, you know, conquer the world. Uh, maybe I am, who knows? But anyway, uh, I, what I'm trying to say is like, I, I think that users, there's always needs to be a check and users yeah. need to have, they need to have a, I, I, I imagine it as an escape valve, like you open up a bit and the pressure just goes out uh, in, in, in this one tiny hole, you know, like, and I think yeah. that's what, what is needed because otherwise the system will just overload and, and, and explode. So you need to kind of to float this pressure somewhere. And that's how I imagine Somnium at the moment to be able for those who want to escape the, the wall gardens, they will, they yeah. will be able to do so. And they will be able to do so with high quality devices, with a high quality metaverse and experience and, Yet, you know, they will have an amazing experience. So this, this kind open of... approach is really going to matter when we start using a lot of AIs, right? If you're playing a video game and you're talking to uh, virtual beings in the game or, you know, you're walking around a shopping mall and a virtual being comes up and starts talking to you, where does the data for that go, right? Yes. And Apple's trying to keep it local, but, you know... They're I think they're doing also. fairly they, okay job, by the way. They're doing fairly okay job. Yeah, if but I compare they, it to others. They like to, I, I call it Apple's building a temple. You know, if you go to Jerusalem where uh, Paul the Baptist grew up, um, his little town had a temple in the middle of the town, which is where you did your shopping, got your schooling, went for dinner, got your entertainment, right? All was in the temple. The church owned the temple, but the church was up on the hill, separate, right? Um that's Apple. Apple's a, a centralized thing, very nice. But if you get kicked out of the temple, you're shunned. You you can't do business, right? You got to go to another town. <laughs> and, Here we and, are, another town. Yeah, <laughs> the other town, right? Um, Meta. You're you're. We're heading into a world where we're where we're going to be interacting with many many different AIs all the time, and having the freedom to talk to the sensors is going to really start mattering. Yes. Right. Absolutely. Being able to talk to the eye sensors and the microphone and the cameras, we're seeing multimodal is going to be a huge trend next year. Right. Multimodal means that the, um, uh, the AI can see the camera, can understand what, what yep. you're seeing in the real world, right? Which is a real key part of mixed reality, being able to understand, oh, there's a tree in front of you. Oh, now we can change the tree, right? Yep. yep. That's all, all right. going to be done by AI. And having the freedom to do that is going to be real important. So, Which, which, which AI do you guys use as an assistant? Um, do you use them, by the way, on a database? And which I'm ones trying are you a using? lot of them. Uh, ChatGPT, OpenAI is still the leader. Their, their models give you better answers than anybody else. 
there's a whole bunch of work on other models. If you go to Hugging Face, you see a whole list of all sorts of smaller models that are built with fewer parameters. The smaller models run on your phone. And that's the key. Yeah, that's like, crazy. Oh, big model in the cloud running on a big NVIDIA H100 cluster, right? That's open AI. That's the best answer. But if you're wanting to run on the phone and you don't want to give the data to the centralized place, then you have to run it on the phone or on your desktop, right? Or on your headset, on your glasses. That's where and 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 by the way, the somnium the somnium architecture of the somnium worlds, the worlds which are people building on on top of our platform, are built in a way that they can stream the data from their own servers. They don't need to host everything on our server. They don't need it to trust us. They can host and stream data in real time. So whenever you go as a user, when you go to their world, it loads up from their servers, and you communicate with them, and they can host it on their own uh, computers or clouds or whatever. And it becomes a truly decentralized place where people can host without a single point of failure. Because that's what I want to eliminate. Yeah. I want to eliminate, you know, the point where if something happens to me or whatever, so the company can still run and the platform will exist kind of forever. That's the goal um, eventually. To Here's let it, to the let new it privacy problem that I think Apple's going to try to do pretty well with. I was playing with my Quest, right, in the, mm -hmm. in the living room. And my wife walked in the room. Now, the Quest has, uh, you know... I mean, this HoloLens has four cameras, right? The Quest, same thing. It has a bunch of cameras to build so a, a model of your room around you, right? My wife walks into the room naked. Well, where's the inferencing being done on that? Is all, is all that video going up to okay. Mark Zuckerberg's Ooh. centralized server or to you? I'm still processing what you just said. Okay. Uh, <laughs> right? Out of nowhere, naked wife. <laughs> Is it all going up to Somnium? If I'm playing Somnium space, and <laughs> wait I'm, a second, right? <laughs> and I'm in a nope. new AI nope. Somnium space, right? Nope. Where is all nope. that inferencing? Nope. Being there is, in? there is no, there is no data leaving your computer for Somnium space headset, even though it has passed through and hand tracking and stuff. All the data are on your computer. We are not uploading go. any data from your computer. Nothing, zero. There we go. And, and, and that's it. Through. Like this is this is it. We give you full yeah. sensor control. We we yeah. open source the algorithm for eye tracking, and we just let you do it. Like just do yeah. it whatever you want. But we are not even the data which you record in Somnium for your movements, your speech, your animation, even the field of view. What do you see for the live forever mode? All that data are on your local machine, yeah. and only when you want us to make your live forever mode work you give us the access to the certain amount of data, only the amount you want and not us. So you can literally have zero, zero leakage of data and you have 100% of control. That's again, that's what I want. I don't want, me as a founder, by the way, I don't want to deal with storing terabytes and gigabytes of data of people's personal information. Why would I want it? I don't want to deal with that. Like the same with the blockchain. Every person owns well, their wallet. Here's why. Here's why. Tell me. It, it, Tell me. It, and, and it's not insomnium, but uh, when we have a pair of glasses on, right, and we have an AI that we can talk to about the world, I'm already asking it a lot of questions. Like uh, it, when I went to Austin, I said, hey, uh, what barbecue places should I visit in Austin, right? And it gives you an answer. Chat GPT gives you an answer. It's pretty good. But if you teach it what you like about barbecue, like I like brisket, but I don't like beef ribs. Well, I, all I know sudden, information is key. I know information is key. Right. Like we'll, the answer gets better. The list it gives you is way better. The you more have to listen carefully what I say. No, no, you have to listen carefully. We <laughs> never, we, no, no, no. We never, we never take your data without yeah. your permission. Yeah. But the, the, the thing is, you have full control over when, how, yeah. and what yeah. data you will give us and why. And I think that is very important because, sure there will be a lot of people who will be sharing data with Somnium to make the live forever mode. And that's how the models will become better. But yeah. again, the moment you would decide to just with is extract everything, you're gone. Like the, the data yeah. are locked on your computer. Twitter has all my data. <laughs> I've been on x.com for 18 years now as of next week. Right. You know, so wow. it has all my data. It knows every restaurant I've ever talked about. It knows everything I've ever taken a picture. Elon of now owns people. everything. Elon it, owns it, everything now. You must get the Elon has it all. Elon, here's one. 
the the electricity going into the computer that I'm talking to goes through a Tesla battery on the wall outside my house, right? So Elon controls my electricity. He uh, he controls my transportation. Soon he, he controls my social media, and soon he's going to control every fucking thing in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Give but, all but, your data to you. But not the picture of your naked wife, because that will be controlled by Apple. That that from the, from the, from, the, from the headset. Maybe you know you know <laughs> Tesla, oh, you know okay. Tesla's going to do a pair of glasses sometime in the next five years too, right? It, it's too for obvious car? for the car. For the car, he wants to do a for phone. Everything. He always talks about the phone. I mean, for I'm everything. not sure whether he he, he no, wants to do he, everything. No, every time I talk about augmented reality, his answer is always Neuralink. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He wants to connect. I mean, that's uh, hook you up. The... Hook you up. Hook your brain right in. Right in. Oh, plug me in. in. I'm, I'm, I'm down for that future. Just did plug you, me in. Did you see? I, I did a video with this company called Cortical Labs. They grew human uh, neurons on a chip. Nine hundred thousand neurons from your own blood, so you Hell. can enslave your own uh neurons on a chip and it's doing work for you it's a new kind of computer it's insane how <sighs> how what? it's like okay. crazy okay one, one second i, I want to i want to matrix is up. right by the way i he, he, a cortical <laughs> labs built the matrix it's a box all sci-fi became re becomes reality one day i mean it's it's proven it's proven it's like it's there it's there if you i'm gonna enslave my back. cells what what are you gonna have your neurons do you know, if you take some neurons and put put them on a chip, you what, see, you, what you are you going to do? I'll, I'll probably stay analog in Somnium. <laughs> I'll I'll have my second me running around in Somnium and like uh, do all this stuff there, and uh, you'll I'll be able to talk me. to me there. I'll I'll I'll, I'll stay Loki. I'll stay Loki. But sure, I would if, if part of you ran in uh, in Cortical Labs computer, it would be closer to you. It would have uh, human instincts, right? He, oh. And he talks. Some people about say this. I'm not human, so I'm not sure like whether they will succeed <laughs> in that. He Some never blinks. A robot. He never <laughs> blinks. If you noticed, I blink. don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I am not Mark Zuckerberg. I blink the, sometimes. The AI, the AI you're using is pretty good. <laughs> I blink. It's hard to it's tell learned. you're not an AI. <laughs> wait, 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 wait! I can do this. Yeah. Oh, see, there we go. I just proof you're in a simulation. There we go. You're AI. Yeah, yeah. I am. But Shota, wait, wait. I want to ask Shota, which 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 assistant do you use? Do you talk to phone or uh, uh, chat GPT with, with with Whisper? Yeah, yeah. And Shota, you? It's, it's fucking. I, I just use um yeah. just, just Google Assistant normally. So you say, like, hey Google. Uh, yeah, yeah. Here we go. Hold on, hold on. Okay. Yeah. Well, chat, hey, I, uh, hi, Chat GPT. I'm talking to the founder of Somnium Space about the future of mixed reality and augmented reality and all sorts of shit. Um, what do you <laughs> think we should talk about? Oh. That sounds like an exciting conversation. Here are a few topics you could discuss with the founder of Somnium Space about mixed and augmented reality. One, the evolution of mixed reality. Yeah. Explore how mixed reality technology has evolved over the years and what breakthroughs we can expect in the near future. Done that one. Challenges in development. Discuss the technical and creative challenges faced in developing mixed reality experiences. We've done that Specific one as well. Hardware limitations, user experience design, and the integration of virtual elements with the real world. Three, wow. applications beyond gaming. While gaming is a popular <laughs> application, delve into how mixed reality can revolutionize education. We've done that as well. Oh no, that's, that's freaky. Four, User accessibility and adoption. Talk about making this technology. Done the two. <laughs> what is it doing? And what steps are being taken to encourage widespread adoption? Five. Privacy and security concerns. <laughs> 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 that as well. Collecting and overlaying data on the real world. Discuss the privacy implications and how data security is. Being <laughs> Six. The role of AI. Consider the role artificial intelligence plays in enhancing mixed reality experience. It's been listening to us this entire time. Personalized content, natural language processing, and spatial awareness. The kind of <laughs> future vision of Somnium Space. Ask about the long-term vision for Somnium Space <laughs> and how they see themselves contributing what? to the evolution of mixed and augmented reality. Remember, oh. the field is vast up. and continuously evolving, <laughs> so there's plenty to explore. Wow. There we go. Right. 
So uh, that's using Whisper. So Whisper is fucking insane, by the way. Whisper. So Whis Whisper API is what's listening to my voice and changing it to text to give to the large language model so the, the large language model can give an answer and then it reads it back with a separate API with voices. Whisper, you can use at a rock concert, uh, 118 decibel music. And it can be two feet from your mouth or about this distance from your mouth. And it can still understand you every, every word. It's insane. When wow. I first saw a natural language processing, Kaifu Lee showed it to me at Microsoft when he ran, ran natural language processing at Microsoft. And it had errors and it had to be in a perfect lab and it didn't do, it use it work anything like this, right? Okay, okay, so, okay. Just I just want to ask you one question. Um, yeah. Since you mentioned Microsoft, and it's very important. How do you, um, what, how do you see big giants uh, like Apple especially Microsoft, because they don't have a play yet. I mean, they have OpenAI, obviously, yeah. but they don't have a play in devices much, especially in XR devices yet. They used to do HoloLens, but they kind of like gave up on VR and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. How do you how do you see them? And how do you see like Samsung and Google um, to, to Google. compete? Like, how do you see the landscape right. changing in the next five years? Because we discussed <laughs> Apple, sure. clear. Meta is clear, but how do we, how do you see those guys? So I, two, uh, three years ago now, I went to John Carmack's office in Dallas. Texas, back when he worked at Meta uh, for Zuckerberg. And he said, you know, um, I think Facebook needs to build a phone. And I go, you already tried to build a phone and you failed at that. You couldn't sell one because nobody wanted a Facebook phone. He goes, yeah, that's the problem. And I said, why Why do you think we need to build, you need to build a phone? And he's like, um, oh shit, hold on a second. The whisper is um, calling. Yeah, my kid's uh, high school is calling. Yeah, whatever. I'll get that later. Um, he said, uh, Facebook or Meta has to build a phone. And I said, why? And he said, well, Apple has all the GPUs down in the phone and has a 5G <laughs> radio in the phone and has a big battery in the phone and has a big heat sink so that when you heat up all the GPUs because you're playing some augmented reality game, uh, it's radiating heat off of the phone and all of that can make the glasses really lightweight where there's nothing in the glasses other than bit blitting the screen from the phone's gpus up to the glasses this is why the new iphone that you just got that has so much more gpu matters to the future because a lightweight pair of glasses is coming that can use the phone mark zuckerberg obviously has not built the phone that anybody hasn't built a phone. So he has to put everything up in the cloud. He's building a lot of custom silicon for the rims of the glasses to keep the glasses very lightweight, using very little battery, um, to, and, and it's driving the displays with a lot of cool shit like what we're talking about, but it's all being done in the cloud. Apple doesn't need to do it in the cloud. They can keep it all in the phone. Near you. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and I think I think one more control. one more one more reason why uh, Facebook needs to make a phone, and now they of course gave up on the phone idea. Now they're going all in on the on the VR headsets. They yeah. want to own the platform because they are being, uh, can you believe it? Violated. Uh, by by Apple and Google yeah. because those guys control. They are the gatekeepers and they control the experience. And now you know Facebook is struggling because they're dependent on them. What we the the, the recent news like of this week. The CTO of Meta said, we asked Google to put Android apps on the Meta headsets, and they said no. Straight up. Why? Back, yeah. Because probably, not probably, but most probably, Google and Samsung are trying to build the same headset as you know Apple trying to do, and they are already two years behind. But anyway, they will try to do it, and they don't want to give Meta the, the ecosystem. Why would they do it? Why would they give their most precious money-making tool to some company which will make all the money instead of them making the money. So I think that's yeah. uh, uh, that that's the that's the that's the part. Yeah, that's so, the problem, right? That's so, the problem for them. So you know, as we go into this new world, you have to look at what what it, all these companies have, and Apple has everything. <laughs> they have it all. They have ultra wideband radios so that they can transfer it. 
from the glasses to the phone, from the phone to the computer with the M1 chip in it or M2 or M3, and the M3 can then talk to the cloud. So you start thinking about, well, what's Apple going to do with uh, artificial intelligence? Well, Apple has AI. First of all, they have a lot of GPU on the phone, which can run AI. And they have a huge amount of neural network in the M1, M2, M3 processor that nobody else has that's connected into an ecosystem that is going to uh, support the glasses. So when a large language mo model Siri comes along, i.e. a Siri that's not stupid anymore, <laughs> and you know it's coming, it's going to run very well on the Apple ecosystem and they can control everything. Yep. I, I... You're going to be talking to Siri all day long right for help of getting barbecue in a in austin or shopping or learning things or you know picking music or whatever and they can lock everybody else out but but you know just again i think like one of the last questions because you know the the, the, the times are but like i want to say like where do you see microsoft in this because i can imagine you know meta is building the headsets samsung google are partnering with qualcomm to make their own headset you know apple is doing headset they, they going special what about microsoft where are microsoft sense i mean they have open ai uh, satya was amazing the, in acquisitions in the last that's five where years, they're going ten years. right yeah so I mean, what's, your, have... what's your take they have labs up there that can build hardware. You know, uh, they make Xbox, they make uh, keyboards, they make Surface computers, right? So they they know how to make. They make something. good hardware. They make good hardware. Yeah. They don't have the brand that people care about them, and they don't have the content. Apple. Apple has invested billions of dollars in Hollywood movie. Right? They won the best movie last year. Apple but. Did. <laughs> they won the best TV show with Ted Lasso, right? So, yeah, I just, I just, I just want to say, but Microsoft just bought what two biggest studios um, for gaming. They are, yeah. they are making acquisitions. So, in in terms There's of the acquisition. content and gaming, mm -hmm. they would be gaming makes sense, right? Because they have Xbox, yes. but they don't have the and ability. Windows. They have Windows, but they don't have the ability to really build a leading edge product right now and get people to believe in it. And that I'm an investor in Microsoft. So I, I believe in Microsoft, not because they're going to compete with Apple, but they have huge data centers. Apple yeah. doesn't. And so, you know, where are all those developers who build for the Apple headset or for your headset going to store all their shit? Well, it's going to be Amazon, Google Cloud, yeah, look, look what, or what, look Microsoft, Microsoft does. Azure, right? GitHub acquisition, gaming Bingo. studios acquisition, Bingo. open AI partnership and acquisition. Basically, they they own no it. Like, you yeah. know, yeah, <laughs> they they've done. Satya is doing an amazing, you know, uh, M and A uh, job in, in there. The only thing is, like, how I don't see them yet in the spatial computing field, no. which I think is important to be in because they did do the will... Hololens, right? So they yeah, have right. some expertise, one, right? right? No. But it, it's that. just, they don't have all the pieces and they don't have stores. They close down their stores. Apple, the, the whole the whole purpose of the Vision Pro isn't really to sell you one. They can't make enough. They can only make a, a few hundred thousand. That's nothing to Apple. Because of the Apple screens, by the way. Because of the screens. Apple that many phones in one day. Yes. What's that? Because of the screens, the screens yes. is the biggest problem uh, for yeah. yeah. And I trust me, I know what what it means to do like the uh, the screens <laughs> for the for the headset. It's just yeah. nuts. It's it's it. But, the quality but control is nuts. Apple, if you if you became an executive at Apple, you have to take a class for a week called the Apple Way, right? Uh, oh, yeah, they yeah. they have a whole methodology on how to make products, how to become an Apple executive, right? And the first slide is the customer journey. This is why the Vision Pro is really amazing at 2D screens, but sort of okay at 3D, right? It's not really, me and you could say, oh, we could do 3D better with an NVIDIA card than they're doing it, right? The thing is, they're getting you into the store. Half of the store is going to be Vision Pro in April. They're rebuilding all of their stores. They're taking half the employees at the store for the demos. So you're going to go in there 
get a, your name on a list, you know, get a time at 2 p.m. on a Saturday and you're going to go in there and get a 30 minute demo. And it's there not not to sell you one. It's there to sell you on augmented reality, on spatial computing. The second one is the one that they want you to buy. That's the one that has a lot of GPU. That's the one that's going to have better 3D. That's the one that's going to be lighter weight and fix a lot of the problems of the first one. Because the first one overheats a little bit. It's heavy on the front. People say after an hour of wearing it, 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 it puts pressure on your face. You, you don't like wearing it after an hour. Right. And so if I'm watching uh, John Wick in it for two and a half hours, I'm, I'm not real happy with that. Right. The second one is going to be better. And then the it's really about selling you on augmented reality. So when the glasses come, that's the that's the one everybody stands in line to buy. Right. I, I wanted to say something really smart and I forgot because you were so captivating. Uh, I, I just I just forgot. I just forgot <laughs> yeah, what I wanted to say. Uh, I, I just forgot what. I, hey. I'm not old, okay? The <laughs> hair is and there. Apple can take this is wisdom. Apple, can, Apple knows it can take years to take people on this journey, right? From 2D screen into 3D, oh, right? Oh, now I They're know what I want to say. Right? It, and they know it can take five years to get people into the 3D world and the AI-driven 3D world. And yeah. that's when all their investments all make sense. I, I think I think one guy, and I don't remember who said it after Vision Pro um, has been announced, someone said, you know, Apple is doing it really smart because they are making a device which millions and millions of people will not be able to afford, but will will really, really want to own. Instead of this. making instead of them making a device which millions of people can afford, but nobody wants it and nobody Make uses it. Make it more it. desirable first. Yeah. Yes. And I think yeah. that is a key. That was the Tesla was doing the same thing. They yeah. you know they started with a car. And I think that's a very smart approach because yeah, yeah the market like Meta does again, it's a decent device for the money. One hundred percent is a decent device, but we see that we, we see the statistics. Only ten percent of those quest twos are being used on a weekly basis. <laughs> sorry carry on this is the not the device. underwear by the way this is not the underwear no this is not the underwear no hold it up this, again this it is strap this is the strap for quest 3 stock strap they pay. this they have to be punished for this this product should not exist it this looks like a, it looks like a pair of knickers i show you what it is i show you what it is this looks like something I would uh, wear in my bedroom. <laughs> yeah, this, yeah, exactly, exactly. Is this like this is this should not ever exist? Like this thing, Meta. Please come on. Like, can you please give people this out of the box, like Pico did? Okay, yeah. please give them really good experience. With a good knob and battery on the back, not like this. The problem Thank is you. they're trying to keep the price under five hundred dollars, you know, and they don't have Pico is for four hundred, so I mean Pico is for for three fifty almost now. So I I'm know. just saying, it's know. it's you know. it, it, yeah okay. But you showed that you have all those fancy add-ons got... for hundreds of dollars and oh, like, this you... one cost me ten dollars and it's amazing. It's like a it's like a um a cheap Quest Pro thing. I don't yeah. have the interface on it. Ten dollars. Use them on a lot. Yeah. Ten dollars. So many gadgets we need to buy. <laughs> to make it work. Where do we take yeah. the money? Anyways, it. it's you know, Apple knows that this is not gonna be something that goes mainstream next year. It's mainstream yeah. is it's a long bet. It's a long uh, but that's what makes years. me excited because they yeah. when Apple goes into arena, it's not a gimmick anymore. They have yeah. a plan for ten plus years right there. They have everything yeah. outlined and that moment when they announced the, the the Vision Pro, I remember that day we were in the office, you know, with the with the VR engineers. Guys. Like this is the moment where suddenly this industry will become a long term bet. Yeah, and we know it will be a long term bet, and that is a very exciting part, really yeah. very exciting part. So thank no, you for it's, it's Apple huge. for doing that. It's huge. Only Apple can sell this to the world because only Apple has stores. Right, business is about distribution. If you, I, I used to be a, a journalist, right, in journalism school. Back in journalism school, it was all about who could get a newspaper into the rack, <laughs> you know. And it, and if you couldn't get a newspaper, you didn't have a job, you know. If you couldn't get the newspaper into the rack so people could buy it, you couldn't do journalism, right? And same thing here. If you can't show it to people 
and nobody can other than Apple. Uh, you I get, agree. You, you, I mean, I live in Silicon Valley, right? You go to the Best Buy near Meta's headquarters, right? R literally a mile away. You can't get a demo of the of the Quest Three. They don't no. have. They don't do demos. There's none in England. Nowhere. Right. Not and, a single place. You know, and so if you can't go and try it out for half an hour somewhere, you're not going to get excited about it. You're I agree. You're not going to get uh, buy agree. it, right? And it's still a device that needs to be experienced because it's so hard to explain it to people what it does. You, 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 you impossible. I can show you videos of me using, uh, you know, all this stuff. It doesn't, it doesn't come doesn't across. Doesn't translate, does it? Doesn't translate. No. Like, like no. you're talking about field of view until you put your head in there, you don't understand what field I, of view I, is. I have a, I have a good example of it. I, I think I mentioned it in the last podcast. It's like, um, you know, this layer pads, uh, with 3d, 3d, yeah. um, 3d thing. Um, I, you know, my grandparents were visiting us last year. Right. And I had this tablet and my grandfather and grandmother were sitting next to each other. And you know that that pad just tracks two eyes. So only one person sees the image in 3d and the other one just sees the 2d image. Right. And I give them, I give my grandfather the, the, the video, a 3D video. And he takes the, 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 the pad and he looks and he's like, oh my God, this is, what is this? And my grandmother sits next to him and, and she's like, like, what, what, it's just a video. And he turns the screen to her. And the moment the camera focuses on the eye and the image becomes 3D, she's like, oh, you know, that, that moment yeah. was like, oh, and that's exactly this. Like people don't understand VR until they properly try it. And they have a proper experience into it. Then they like, oh, that's it's life changing. The VR it's life changing. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. It is. If it's a proper experience, it's life changing for sure. Mm, yeah. For sure. Yeah. So yeah, it's, the future's uh, still out there. I'm waiting. You no, know, I don't, I don't play uh, pancake games anymore. Peter, the CTO of Mattio, showed me monsters on the sides of skyscrapers 13 years ago. I'm still waiting. <laughs> oh wow i don't have them yet <laughs> snapchat got close but they but i can't buy a pair of snapchat glasses right and they they have it working but not they they can't yep. make it at scale they can't make it the, the battery last long enough right there's yep. still a huge engineering problem to make a lightweight pair of glasses really useful oh, look. for normal consumers right my 3gs iphone the old yeah. one doesn't yeah. work anymore but uh I have, I have it. the iPhone one around here somewhere. And then I have the iPhone four. I had, I don't have that one anymore. Unfortunately, I, I don't remember what happened to it, but I, um, that was I, a good one. I stood one. in line at Steve Jobs store and was first to buy an iPhone. Oh man, store. don't tell me those things. <laughs> oh, <so>. <laughs> <laughs> not a fanboy. Just me. Well, uh, by the way, standing in line was more fun than getting the product. <laughs> I can't imagine. I can't imagine like. We, to those the people. entire old, the first Macintosh team was in line with us. So you, t we talked about Xerox Park. Those guys were in line with us. Wow. You know, it was like, wow, it was crazy, crazy times. All right, this is again, man. I mean, um, look, that was amazing to to have you, and thank you for thank you for coming. And anytime you want to come back, please do. That was, you know, we'll revisit. We'll uh, revisit. I love where you're going. I mean, you know, you remind me a lot of Ev, Ev Williams, who started Twitter. Right. And I met him when he was really broke. He w was running a service called Blogger. Right. So he was always aiming at publishing. He's like you, you know, always aiming at, at immersive media experiences. And it took him a while, but now he's a billionaire. <laughs> so, I have a feeling. Now we're talking. Wait a second. <laughs> How did <Yeah>. you get there? <laughs> <laughs> well, he started Blogger. He kept uh -huh. Blogger running. He fired all Writing of his down. employees, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, begged for money, kept his uh, company m moving, sold it to Google for, I don't know, $30 million, made some money, and started a little podcasting company. That didn't quite work out, but one of his employees started Twitter, and now he's a billionaire. <laughs> we, 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 can, can I? Can we invite him to this show? But like, he'll never. He'll know. Anyway, uh, what I, what I want to say, I by the way, is you know, that... I haven't seen him for a while. You know, he's a billionaire. He's off in the Caribbean on a jet ski right now. I mean, that's what I'd be doing. What a lad <laughs> doing, doing AI powered wheelies on a jet ski. Uh, I, just, I, I, I just, I just want to say, hanging out talking... with Richard Branson on his island. You know, that's what I'd be doing. I'll, if I I'll do, a I'll do a shameless plug, not because it's a plug but because I think it's relevant for the discussion. Um, 
not only I believe in decentralized metaverse and hardware, open source hardware, I also believe in decentralized social media as much as I love Elon and I, and I you know, respect him. And I yeah. kind of like Twitter. We're building authenticity and you know it, I think, you know, you've seen it and I kind of, I, I tried to force you there and you were, you had really good constructive feedback. I appreciate that. And uh, we are working on it, but I yeah. believe that owning your speech and being able to say something and not let anyone or any entity or government be able to delete that. It's the huge power for the future Ooh. because we're living yeah. in a very dangerous situation in the world where free speech is being surpassed, uh, suppressed and, and, uh, and, and things, you know, being really changed. And, and also, you know, th someone could change the, the, the narrative of what you've said and things like that. So I think being able to control your speech being able to anchor that speech forever on the digital space and being able to directly monetize your your uh, content is key. Yeah. And if 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 these three things, they need to exist because uh, I think Twitter is doing a better job than it used to do before. You are a proof example of mostly, that. You're, you have most your of own... your social media in the future is going to be about training your AI so, so your AI gets smarter. Yeah, and you're I mean, going to want true. to run that's that funny. locally and have that in a little vector database on your phone so that anytime you go shopping, you can trade all your data to the shopping mall so that the shopping mall gets better for you. And you get right? food for free. You, you, you give them well, a month of data and then you get food far. for free. <laughs> but but at <laughs> least you month. would get the restaurant that you cared about and it would tell you which dish to order there because it knows what kind of food preferences you have and allergies you have and all the you other stuff. Point where it's just all like automated. if you're vegan, you're going to get a different, <laughs> you know, experience at Terry Black's than if you're a, a meat eater like me. Yeah, right? you, you 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 remember when I told you that you will be you will be uh, giving the data to Somnium from your local computer only when yeah. you want it. But I yeah. forgot to tell you that on our marketplace, decentralized marketplace, you will be able to pack the data and offer it to researchers. And researcher can come to Somnium and say, "I want one week of data." for a male and um, in VR with voice movements of full body tracking, 11 point tracking and the field of view. And I'm paying uh, 500 eye cubes sensors? or $500 for, yeah, yeah. Because your eyes tracking. tell you of a course, lot about, eye, you know. Like... Oh, no, no, eye tracking is there. We have a heat map in built into some new headset uh. and you can control this, you, it's yours. So we want this data and we will pay you $500. Are you willing to sell it to us? And then the user will say, oh, whoa, that's there's an offer. Uh, for this, I, I, I'm going to either sell it or I'm going to go and record my data and sell it to them. But again, it will be on a blockchain. It will be decentralized and transparent. And you will only give the data you decide to give to them. And they will only use it for the purpose, you know, or they will take it and you will know what the purpose they're using it for, at least for what they claim. And they have to probably obey for that. So I think this is important. Elon Musk already has all my data, so I don't really give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> I quit. We turn off lights in Somnium. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> I will but fight until I die to make this centralized world happen. Okay, come on. The you problem is you're gonna give everybody your data anyways, and it's gonna learn really quick about you. I here, here's a a serious. Uh, uh, my psychiatrist. I have a psychiatrist, right? Um, she uses chat GPT to listen to her therapy sessions with her patients, right? She's working on mental illness with her patients. She has chat GPT listening, sort of like what we just did with the uh, chat GPT. It, in half an hour, it wrote highly detailed scientific notes on me in half an hour, one 30 minute conversation. And it nailed all of my mental illnesses in one conversation. So it doesn't need much to know every fucking thing about you. <laughs> That's scary and also incredible at the same time. It is incredible. And she says it's going to soon be malpractice not to use AI because it's catching things she missed with her patients because it, you know, she only yeah, sure. used to talk to me every of two course. weeks, right? Of course. And then she forgets what I talked about last week, but her notes are really detailed now. Right. Oh man. And yeah. and the AI watches trends over me meetings. So if I meet with her 20 times over 20 weeks or a year, right? It can see, oh, you're 
improving you, you know what's time. the truth you know what's the truth you'll not need her soon anymore you can just do it with chat gpt she's off yeah, there's she something about talking off. to human beings yeah it's, it's, no there's something i, about I think talking, talking to human beings yeah. is overrated i talk you know, to i like talking to you to more VR. than i like talking to chat gpt right okay now. okay I mean, thank you, know. thank you. Thank you. Chat GPT likewise, did a pretty good likewise, job of telling likewise. me what to talk about, though, right? Yeah. He's an AI. He's not real. Look at him. He's still not blinked. <laughs> oh, no. Dude, he might be. You know, you know I, I like talking to my bots once in a while. But, you Robert, know. You, know that I, you, know, you know that for more than three years, I take all my calls, business calls from VR, right? Uh, yeah. mo most of them I do from VR. And I kid you not, some people, some of investors of Somnium, uh, when when they invested in like or like they've never seen me in real conversation as as the VR they invested by like just talking to me from VR and some people like I don't I don't know if Arthur is real like I I've never it's probably but I've seen just an avatar in Somnium so uh, you know that's um, that's another part but of course I'm real guys I promise I'm real okay absolute lies in five Maybe. years it's gonna be really hard to tell yeah <laughs> I, I'm scared of that. <laughs> Look, I send you a lot of love. I mean, a lot of love. Come on. A lot I mean, you heard the voice, right? You heard the voice, how good it is, right? You heard the voice. It is. It, it is. It's it is. getting it really is. good. I, I, Hippocratic AI, a co company that's doing medical uh, healthcare AI. I like the name. I, I talked to the, their AI for half an hour, and it was like talking to a human being, right? Because it was fine tuned on a very specific. Task. I, I can tell it. Okay, I can bring you some knowledge of, um, you know, because my my native language is Russian. I speak Russian, and I use the, you know, like we have uh, Alexa at home and others. Um, you know Yandex. You know the uh, Russian search engine Yandex, huge company, yeah, yeah. huge technological company there, and they have their own home pods and assistants and stuff like that. It's scary good, like in. Because they nail the conversation. It's so human-like. My kids talk to it, and it's very smart. Like, it knows when the kids are talking to it. It tells them to be polite. Like, if they're like, hey, turn me off. It's like, you should just say please and things like that. <laughs> they, play, they, play they play games with it. They, yeah. The conversations they're having with it are freaking incredible. So what I wanted to say is that while you ask have a head start, I can guarantee you that China and Russia are catching up very fast. The the yeah. amount of AI happening in um in Russian companies like banks um and yeah. Yandex and uh like Russian speaking companies, let's say, it's insane. And I'm pretty sure because I don't know the Chinese landscape very well, right? But I'm pretty sure in China the same thing happens because once the genie is out of the bottle, it's out there. Like it's you can't. You People just, know how to build large language models now. It's a, of course, it's a fairly course. simple technology, actually. Yeah, it's the yeah. data that you need to build the model, and it's the Nvidia cards that you need to run the data through to make the model. Yeah, but you have That's you have half, the, half a billion Russian speaking people all over the world. So I mean, they have the data, and Chinese are there, like one and a half billion yeah. people. They they have the data. You know, they, and then the, there the was data. the British. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you speak English. We're in so a new world. Yeah, yeah no. it's a new it's a new world, and I think uh, I think look, we are we are we're trying to be prepared. We're trying to we're trying to bring to people uh, our vision. We try to we try to use those products and uh, um, you know enjoy the the life. Um, I'm always thinking about how my kids. My kids are seven and ten, and they That's see like what what I work on. They, they kind of digest the thing what I work on, right? But. It's it's hard to predict for them like what skills do they need to learn today to be relevant in ten years like that is a big question what I'm asking labor. myself <laughs> um, manual labor hmm? maybe the, the uh the 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 AI beat the best Go players at the game of Go right and the humans were demoralized for a while they went and you know stayed in bed for a couple months because they were depressed that they got beat by the AI. But then they started using the AI to learn how to play better. It's uh, enjoyable to play the game. Actually, our neurons like to play games, right? And so they're using the AI to learn new moves now, right? And that's yeah. that's what's on the other side of this is when, when AI is starting to do so many things for us, we're going to use the AI to have more fun in life. Do, right? do, you, do you know what games I'm playing with my kids? Ah. Any, any yeah. bets? Any guesses? Yes. Chess, yeah. chess, of course. No, chess, of course. But I mean, computer games. Do you know which computer World games I'm playing? Uh, nope. Uh, Call of Duty. Bo bo boomer, 
Nope. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> uh, I'm playing Age of Empires 2. Yeah. And, what a game. And, and Heroes of Might and Magic 3. These uh, are the games I'm playing with please. my kids. See, I, and my kids don't want to play games. My son, uh, who's 13 now, when he gets home from school, as soon as he gets his homework done, he's on Discord with his friends. And what are they, they doing? All... What are they doing? What are they doing? Roblox, Minecraft, you know. Yeah, Minecraft is still shockingly relevant, games, isn't it? you know, uh, all, all the usual shit. Roblox, right? I have to say, I have some mixed mixed feelings about Roblox just because how much pressure they put on the kids to buy new things there. Oh, it's yeah. kind of it became a platform which which sucked the money out of kids through their parents. I'm pretty sure you know, like you you, you know, my kids don't play Roblox. I don't let them like just mine no. don't. But see, I, but, I have no rules in my house. <laughs> you want to play yeah. Roblox? That's fine. That's the best way. No arguments. <laughs> you want to play it? You want what's the What's the what's the uh, 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 you know? There's all these violent games. I don't care. Go. You know, my my kids my kids don't have mobile phones yet. I'm just saying, they do. They I get iPad at a year and a half old, and they're 13 and 15. Oh no no, they use. I mean, they use what I have at home. So they use. They play chess on the tablets, and they they, they understand all the tech. They know how to use it, but they don't own the phone, um, and they don't like bring None it of my to kids school or whatever. Phone, but they don't need it yet. Yeah. You know? Yeah, exactly. I just, I just want to say, like, I, they do VR sometimes. Be like, Apple Vision Pros. Are you gonna get them a Somnium space? I'll, I'll, you know, are you gonna get them a VR headset? I mean, they're they're not. I mean, they are. They, they they asked me literally yesterday because I was showing them the pictures. Um, of uh, I will not show it here. Uh, but I, oh, I was showing them the pictures of of of, uh, of uh, Somnium VR One, like the pre production testing units we're doing. Uh, and the first question was like, when I bring it to home, I want to try it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Father, bring it home. Bring it home. Yeah. I'm like, soon. That soon. Stores. It's coming soon. <laughs> See, you're, if your kids don't have it, I, I'm not going to get it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next picture of my kid in the VR one. Okay, I promise. I promise. Because I need to sell it to Robert. <laughs> All right, gentlemen. Uh, what a new, mean, world, a new is... world we're heading into, man. Absolutely. And it, it like we just relieved the revolution from you know, of smartphones, basically, we're living through it. Like it's it's an, an end curve right now. And there is new one coming and it will change the world again. It will change the world. We know it. I'm sure the XR will change the world. And I think that's kind of like almost the final destination because that's where like you are in that thing. And you, you like, I think and the next one is brain like, upload, like, baby. Can't wait for that. Yeah, bit. But brain upload. Yeah, I mean, right. But you know, yeah, I think it's still like years away. Um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But, but but I think in our lifetime, it depends. Was three? Are you? We, we, if you have Parkinson's, you might get one tonight, right? I met the surgeons who uh, put a uh, electrode into your brain to keep your hands from shaking if you have Parkinson's, right? Oh wow! Um, and it costs one hundred fifty thousand dollars to put one wire in, and he said, "Well, now we have a conversation with the patients." Um, how many wires do you want? <laughs> you know, do, and Neuralink is what thirty two thousand last time they talked, so it's probably more now. But you know, yeah. I mean, look, if I, I had I, Parkinson's, yeah. give me the Neuralink. Oh, Just for sure, no, no, for up. sure. Yeah, no question, no question about that. Then, um, then Elon really controls me. He <laughs> <laughs> turns your shake and to shake off when you're annoying him. Oh no, <laughs> no. He, if you have wires on your brain, there's no free will anymore. He can control you. He can oh, make your hand go scary. Up yeah. yeah. But I want it. Wow. Right. Oh, oh, blow me. Well, wow, if you have Parkinson's, you want it. You know, if you're normal, nah, let's hold uh, on. He's not, no, he's not normal. Who is normal? No. Out, <laughs> of us three, out of us three, who is normal here? Like, raise your hand. I am. I am. I, I need am cr cr cricket up. sounds. <laughs> cricket sounds. We need cricket if sounds. If Elon here, said like... I could get the beta uh, of Neuralink, I'd sign up for it. I'd be like, fuck yeah, let's go. Elon. I don't think it asked me because I'm so basic. <laughs> yeah, but you know, to 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 they, they need to level up the, the the model from like brilliant people in it, some basic people. So maybe maybe they'll uh, they'll reach out. So, well, you know, so the, my, the goal of education. You asked a question which was interesting, right? What what are our kids going to need to learn? To, yeah, to, to be relevant in the future. They're going to, an educated person who knows a lot of things is going to be able to talk to the AI about more things, right? 
Or if you're very specialized, like if you're a surgeon, you're going to be able to talk to the AI about surgery in a much deeper way than I could, right? Because uh, I don't have the background. I, I didn't go to Stanford Medical School for six years, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it's it's, so it's a brave humans new are world. Still going to need to know things. I've got it's a question just, about you're going to need to know them so that you can talk to the AI about them. You got a question, Shorter? Yeah. How Go. long will it be? Do you think? Because you two are professionals, and I am the pleb here. <laughs> how long do you think it will okay. take before we have the ability to upload a profession straight to your brain? Like you just said, with the surgery, if I can tap into a sensor and i know and then i know oh this is how i do it do you think that's possible with how it's going may may i start with answering this question robert um yeah i think i think um i'll i'll give it a little bit of a philosophical answer here and i'll mm -hmm. try not to take too long uh to answer i think we as humans are a bit um we always imagine the future in a bit different way, but we are coming to that future from a different direction than we think we will. And I'll explain myself. I think like we're, you know, humans were fantasizing about time machines for a long, long time. Yeah. And we always thought it's kind of like a device which you step in and will, you know, take you through the space and time and warp and whatever to some, you know, uh, you know, in the past and, and you'll be able to work. I think the XR version of recording spatial and then reliving that thing is a time machine of sort. And you will have more and more of those experiences. So we will come to a place where you will be able to relieve every step of your life in maybe someone else's life. And it will feel like a time machine, but it won't be a time machine. So to come back to your question, I think you will be able to learn the profession not by knowing how to do it, but but by, but by being shown how to do it so effectively that you will not need yeah. to learn it. And that I think that's the, if, if we're talking about this, I think maybe 10, 15 years and you will be able to like wear the glasses and you will know almost any information in the world and it will show you exactly where to do what. I think that's the, that's the future I imagine. It's like a different direction. Instead of just uploading it to your brain, you will be able to do effectively or see the information so much, so effectively and hear yeah. it you will not need that upload actually because you will have that information in front of you. Does it make I sense? I was just ratcheting, you know, the surgery example is a good example. Um, we already use robotics in surgery. I, I I used one of them at SRI and I did a suture on a fake uh, piece of skin, right? Was I really doing the suture? No, I was being assisted by the AI. The AI was really doing the suture. I was sort of just guiding it, you know, and telling it what I what I was trying oh, to do yeah. and it took over and did the, did most of it. Could it do all of it? Hell yeah. Could, could it watch millions and millions of surgeries being done on the robot and learn how to do all sorts of complex surgery? Yeah. But when I go into the hospital and I need surgery, I still want to talk to a human being. Yeah. True. As, True. Even as good as chat GPT is to talk to, it's not the same as talking to a real human being who's gone to school for six years and has been doing surgeries, you know, before so far. robotics took <laughs> over. Right. So there's still a, a role for a human being there. Um, I don't know. You know, it, um, I wonder if it would evolve out of the need for humans. You know well, what I mean? Well, you know, if you had a robot in your house, like, like an Optimus, a, a you know, humanoid robot, you're, yeah. you're certainly going to have it. Are you going to wash the toilets? No, you're going to have your robot do that. So does that make you less human? I don't think even a robot would touch my toilet. <laughs> oh, no, it doesn't care. Okay. It's a fucking piece of melted glass. Come on. <laughs> it doesn't have and not until you hook up the cortical labs uh, matrix. Oh, and then, no. Then all of a sudden, it starts, <laughs> coming, you know, yourself. Then it starts going, oh, shit. No, I'm not going to touch that. Exactly. Toilet. What the hell oh. is this, man? <laughs> Go do it yourself. <laughs> but, but for right now, a, a digital robot is no problem. It'll do it'll do your laundry. No, you, know, you know what dishes. it will do? You know you know how Tesla is doing like the, the, the insurance like the, on, based on how you drive? Yeah. 
it it will it will increase Is the monthly subscription price. Yeah, yeah. It, it will increase the monthly subscription price for your Tesla Powerwall just based on the how how filthy the toilet your uh, your toilet is, and the the robot had to like do it. He'll like, yeah. oh, your toilet was so bad. You, you, your subscription goes 20% off. But yeah, Tesla yeah, is doing it's this. It's an insurance. hour job. You know, if it takes a robot an hour to clean your toilet, it'll charge you 50 bucks. Exactly. If it only takes five minutes because your to toilet is It will charge you credits. It will charge you credits. You have to choose. <laughs> it will have to choose. Either it will, it will, either it will do your toilet or the power wall or the, the solar panels will not work for another hour. You know, you'll have to choose. You have to balance. Guys, wow. Uh, I mean, we can uh, talk all day long. This is this is incredible. I again, we could yeah, we could talk all day long. I think uh, let's leave some of the room for the next discussion. I would love to have you back, and we would love to have you back, Robert, yeah. uh, one day in the future. I'm letting go. Was... I want to know what, <laughs> what's the, what's the personal AI you're gonna build for Somnium Space. So when I start playing Somnium Space, you know, is there and a you will personal see, AI it, there? it will be your you know it will be you and and um yeah. I think you will see you will start seeing this within the next see, three now, months. Uh, you're just like everybody else. People, what? entrepreneurs, they call me up and they go, oh, we want your Twitter data. Give us your Twitter data. It's 30 gigs, by the way. 18 years of Twitter data. Can I have them? Can I have them? Can I have them? Right click and save yeah, yeah. your, your they, they find they, they take that data and they fine tune their little AI model to make an, a Robert Scoble AI. And it's pretty good because it has all my data. Oh, right? Shota. Next time we just invite the AI. Say yeah. again, you broke up. Can, can we say? can we can we make our yeah we'll we'll just we'll just make AIs of ourselves and Robert and okay. we'll just run the podcast automatically. Okay. We just not we don't need to do it. It will I'll just record it, it I'll be to YouTube, relief. boom, it's done. And, <laughs> and, I, and I we'll be playing games. Three, I've already given my my data to three entrepreneurs, so they already built three AI. I have three AIs. Okay, can, we, can I be the first one? Up. Can I be the first one? I, yeah. I will upload into Somnium. Okay, they're, done. They're off, done. God knows what trouble they're getting into. They might be getting arrested right now because they're in Vegas getting drunk and, you know, doing some... <laughs> All these fines racking up. I can't remember being here. Oh, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get a, a you know at a, a court appearance uh, warning. You know <laughs> your AI is in oh. trouble. You know you got to bail your AI. Your, AI out. You. <laughs> your, your second your second personality has been arrested. Please come to this court at 9 a.m. <laughs> to pay the fine. Yeah, I mean, wow. Uh, that's uh, listen, gents. Um, this has been amazing. Um, yeah. I think the future is bright. Um, I hope part of the future is decentralized uh, because we need to get some hope to people and some smaller communities or maybe bigger communities. You want to run Rewind on your local machine. You don't want to put it in the cloud because then Correct. you give, got to give yes. Mark Zuckerberg all your yes. data. And ideally, ideally, that machine is an open source machine so that it's very well, viable. Let's not go too far to Macintosh. <laughs> ah, Ladies and gentlemen, Robert Scoble, the lost soul of Macintosh and the wall garden. Um, you could run Linux on the Mac, but you know, uh, it's a it's a pain in the ass. Apple makes I know. it so nice. I, I agree. It's, Linux is a bit of pain yeah. in the ass. And now Linux people will hate us, but hey, we love you guys. We love you. It's all good. If you're running Linux on your uh, Mac, God bless you. <laughs> well done. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Listen, gentlemen, you've been amazing um i i love you both nice and um yeah i mean this will be an amazing episode it will come out, out uh in a few days on saturday we'll uh we'll we'll do some we'll send you some bits and pieces we'll do some cool uh cool stuff about it we'll see if and anybody watches it it was fun though it was amazing and uh we'll see if someone like we'll force it into the people's minds okay <laughs> we will just for a centralized market we'll force it into people <laughs> yeah i mean look look you look you have to be decentralized <laughs> from here to here but like you need to you need to still push things on all right the, let's on let's top. let's in, end up with some uh useful information what's your favorite prompt my favorite prompt on on chat gpt is helping me to phrase my thoughts in a better way um wow. like i i because i do write a lot of things and you know my, english is like I speak well, I think, but it's not my native language, and there's always better way to say things. So whenever I'm I'm writing a blog post, I'm kind always... of Deutsch. I don't speak other languages. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> uh, that's fantastic. Okay, so I always ask like, "Hi, ChatGPT, can you machen machen?" 
No, I, I always I always like ask it to like can I can you can you look at at, at, the, at this paragraph and like phrase it better and then I just tweak the I tweak the text I tweak the text to make it to make it more readable uh, and th so I think that's the most I use uh, ChatGPT and then some like I did an you know an, an X-ray analysis uh, and the uh, blood uh, I had my blood um, uh, thing taken and then I got the results. And I just uploaded it to to ChatGPT, and that got me actually fairly, very, very close and uh, correct analysis of it. So just things like that. I'm playing around with it. Do I use it a lot? I use it like three, four times per week, but not like every day. Not as much as I thought I would use it, to be honest. Uh, so yeah. that's maybe I need to improve. It has a lot of holes. It, it you know. It does. It, it does. It, it still it, does. It's really cool for a lot of things, and then you start asking it some questions, and it's like falls apart. My favorite prompt is. Um, Please show me all points of view on X, on Apple Air, AirPods, or whatever topic you want. Wait, wait, explain it to me. Wait, I, I, it was a little show too much information. Me all, it's a multi-level prompt. That, yes. That's what makes ChatGPT or a, a large So tell me how to make different. that one. Like, where do I set up in, in ChatGPT? What do I click to make that? You, you just know, type, you know. To, okay, the, okay. So, okay, yeah, show, okay. Please show me all points of view on cement or yosemite national park or whatever topic you okay and what what what's the result is what the result is uh it'll give you all points of view right so it'll it'll tell you like uh you know give me all points of view on somnium space and it'll give you it'll give you a bunch of points of view the second can prompt, you try it in real time oh no 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 don't, uh, don't do it don't do it uh oh uh, uh oh I'll, I'll i'll send it to you we can okay good up. good good and i'll uh, say like points of view were great Great. Yeah, it's actually a four-step uh, prompt, and and here's the second step: is please show me a persona for each point of view. In other words, uh, it gives you ten points of view, and it picks a name for each point of view, an expert. Oh. Right? Then, third step is please join all those personas into a debate club or a South by Southwest panel discussion or something like that. Right. And it does. It's really crazy. And then the fourth step is you talk to the panel, your debate Ooh, about deep the deep dive in. And, and then it'll say, oh, Joe uh, says, you know. Okay. You know, and the first step, you do it all in VR with avatars and bam, there we go. you're, you're there we in go. it. That's there we go. the holy grail, ladies and gentlemen. And that's By the what way, you do in Somnium Space. I call these contextual com committees because if you walk into a restaurant, what kind of committee do you want? A chef, a restaurant critic, right? Somebody who understands food. If you're going uh, into a classroom and trying to learn surgery, you want surgery professionals around you, right? And people who know the topic you're trying to learn, right? If you're going to a shopping mall and trying to buy some clothes, you don't want a chef. You want somebody who's into fashion, right? So you need different committees around you for all yeah. of the different context you have. I need to right? start if using you're walking ChatGPT around more. Somnium space, right? In Somnium space, if you go to a nightclub, you'll want a certain committee to hang out with you. If you go into a museum, you want a different committee to hang out with you. You want an NFT expert with you, right? You know? Absolutely. <laughs> a banker, yeah. maybe. You know? Somebody who can yeah. get your money. And buy ideally shit. both. Ideally both. Right, you know, so NFT you'll need expert. different committees of different AIs as yeah. you go, even in one virtual space, you know, metaverse. Right, Woo, guys, wow, <laughs> contextual <This> committees, <laughs> is, <yeah>, contextual <laughs> committees that's the keyword we're finishing this, uh, this, uh, this discussion uh, with, and uh, it all starts with a prompt. It all starts with a prompt and finishes with committees. That's a beautiful ending of this amazing episode with the uh, amazing people in this episode. Again, thank you, Robert, for coming. Thank you, Shoda. Uh, thank you, myself. Next time I'll bring my committee. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god. Oh, that, that, that sounds that, that sounds all right. I can't, okay. I can't I already got a chat GPT sort of train, you know. <laughs> I gotta get a uh, committee to help me uh, do. In fact, uh, 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 Abby Schiffman, who's building this new uh, pendant, AI pendant, uh -huh. he's using it all the time and it's helping him. It, it, when he does pitch meetings, it tells him. Do you oh, believe you in this little... product? Do you believe yeah, in this product? I, I, I think he's on to something. It's just the AI is not quite good enough for it. Yeah. It's good enough for a, 
a, a few things, but it falls. And apart. I have questions to the hardware, so I think they are, they will need to. There's no hardware. It's, it's they're, a they're, fucking yeah. microphone yeah. with a Bluetooth radio <laughs> that goes to your phone. Yeah, but it's like it has work is done or anything. It's like that little clippy thing that you clip on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it that's is. different. Oh, that yeah. has a computer in it, but uh, yeah. the the cheaper ones, like Rewind's building a pendant that I ah, interviewed okay. the founder. Okay, okay. It just okay. has a microphone and a speaker and a cheap computer. It's sixty nine bucks. All the work is being done on your phone. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. Woo! I'm sweating. I'm, I'm. I'm. I'm mentally sweating. Okay. I'm not sweating in the real, but I'm mentally sweating. Uh, I can is... see. It. I'm going to start up Somnium Space in like five years. You know, and there's going to be a committee that meets me at no, the no, front no, you'll door. Start, you'll, you know? start, you'll start Somnium Space in like one year or half a year. And you'll come in and they'll be like Robert Scoble, like, "Hello, let's <laughs> talk about GPT committees." And like, wait, I know this guy. <laughs> Where's the yeah. data coming from? Oh, I yeah. promised him to give it to him. All right. Yeah, that's exactly what will happen. Uh, you. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll, and as we'll I walk that. around, some of the people, the committee will peel off and disappear and, and new ones will come in because I'm walking toward a museum. It's like, devil, it's like devil and the angel, you know, oh, you'll be like, there we go. That's, like, that's like, ultimate committee, right? What, what, you know? what, uh, <laughs> you should, okay. Okay. You should go into the orgy tent in the. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Woo! Don't go in there. Oh, that's where I am. That's where I am. Ooh, okay, gentlemen. Uh, I, I, <laughs> we we discuss very that. important topics this, this in this episode. Like what happens? What happens the, if the naked wife comes in and you are in an Apple headset? Very the important head. topic. <laughs> the or, People the are or, talking about or, having or, AI girlfriends. Screw oh, yeah, that! Go on I'm on. gonna have a whole committee of them. <laughs> I'm gonna have a whole what's it? A harem? We'll have a harem of AI. Yes. <laughs> My wife, my wife already j- jokes with me. She says, tell the AI girlfriend to get lost. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait a second. When you were talking about the romantic walks on the beaches of Spain, were, was what your wife with you at that moment? Or was yeah. it? Cool. <laughs> okay, and my okay, AI um... girlfriend too. <laughs> oh, yeah. with me, you know? All right. Yeah. Bring her next time. Okay. Yeah. okay. <laughs> there we go. That's, we that, got the fireworks. <laughs> Contextual right, committees, they're weird, you know? We need to we need to stop somewhere because otherwise this will be the longest podcast ever recorded. I don't know what's the record. We can beat it. I'm pretty sure we can beat it. But I mean, the wow. smart people are going to take the hour and a half and stick it in the chat GPG and ask it, give me a, a short no, uh, Don't listen synopsis. to him. Don't listen. No, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. Tell us no, the top to five look. points. Robert, you know, you know, we have a for the next episodes, we'll be having a probably a giveaway of, of this. And somewhere in the middle, yeah. or where, somewhere, I will say one keyword and people have to guess it to get the headset, but it will be maybe in the next one. Because I'll be, but maybe if they stick it to JGPT, they will they'll be able to have it in five seconds. Oh, they will. That's not that. fair. Yeah. Please oh explain what they're, this is another prompt that's fun. Please explain this conversation to me as if I was a five year old, right? Yeah, oh yeah, that that is. That I, is I funny, need yeah. that one a lot. <laughs> I need that one a lot. <laughs> I I need that if I'm reading a, a surgery report. <laughs> just anything. I'm I'm just a a, a VR user. <laughs> no, no, near the the intellectual level. Of You're gonna have a, nah, a contextual committee nah, nah, of nah. children telling you about things. You know, oh that. I'll be like, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Here's yeah. how to learn oh. surgery from a child <laughs> a child's point of view. You know. <laughs> Gents, one second right. to finish to finish the discussion. We need, we started with this tile and we'll we'll finish it uh, with this tile too. So, all right, it was I'm, I'm it was a pleasure. It was back a pleasure. to the past. It was a pleasure. Back to the past and the future. Um, Robert, thank you very much for coming. Shoda, as always, a pleasure. Hello. And uh, thank you. Arthur, future Arthur and a past Arthur. Thank you, and, AI uh, Arthur, for being here. Thank you, AI Arthur, for being here. I, <laughs> I am really, really real person. I One day you will you. <laughs> and uh, we see each other in the next episode. Of, You're going to uh, be in one of my space. committees. When I need help with VR, I'm going to ask, uh, you know, I, get that Somnium Space guy in here. I need some help. <laughs> <laughs>